The NCAA Rifle Championships continue live from Morgantown, West Virginia. We welcome you inside the WVU Coliseum for day two of our two-day national championship event, Air Rifle Competition. Coming up this morning and afternoon, we'll crown an individual champion in this discipline and name the overall team champion for our two-day event. Nick Farrell here alongside our analyst, Verena Zeisberger. Verena, let's take a look at the team scores through the first round of competition. Two small bore relays, and after that competition, West Virginia has a six-point lead over TCU. That six-point lead, though, is not huge in this sport. In fact, TCU led by eight after one small bore relay, and West Virginia was able to reclaim first place before the end of day one. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. It was interesting to see yesterday. I mean, we had uh, three people for each team in the first relay, and after that, TCU was leading them. But um, after the second relay, uh, West Virginia just took the lead, and that shows how with only two athletes in a relay, it just kind of can throw the whole whole thing off. So I think the, the six-point lead is definitely nice for West Virginia to have. Um, but at the same time, points aren't as easily make, made up in an air gun as they are in small bore. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see. West Virginia is in a good position, but we'll see if they can keep it up. Um, TCU has excellent air gun shooters. Um, just really every every single athlete has the potential to get in the final today and to post a really good score for the team. Two air rifle relays this morning. First one is about to begin. We just got the command from Chief Range Officer Earl Litherland. Yeah, we see on the screen right here, um, or we saw on the screen two TCU shot shooters, um, Grunzo and Zahn, both excellent air gun shooters. Uh, Grunzo actually uh, led the final yesterday in small bore um, by far, and then actually had to take uh, fourth place in the final as Mary Tucker uh, went for the win. We're switching over from ciders now to match shots. Some key differences today between small bore yesterday and boy what an exciting final that was small bore three position relays kneeling uh, prone and standing in air rifle though 60 shots all standing and you'll notice if you watched yesterday our competitors are much closer to the target today it's a 10 meter air rifle competition so that's about 32 feet just shy of 33 feet yesterday they were 50 feet from the target, but these air rifle targets are substantially smaller. The 10 that they're aiming for is half a millimeter in diameter. Competition underway now. We'll have three shooters from each of our eight qualifying teams in this relay. In our second relay, two shooters from the eight qualifying teams, as well as a handful of individual qualifiers from Ohio State, Murray State, Memphis, Akron, and Georgia Southern. A reminder, our teams are West Virginia, TCU, Air Force, Kentucky, Alaska, Fairbanks, the reigning team national champion, Ole Miss, Navy, and Nebraska. And we touched on it earlier, Verena, WVU and TCU right there at the top of the leaderboard, but Kentucky also has some capable air rifle shooters, including Sofia Ciccarello, who appeared in the small bore final yesterday and is the leader nationally in air rifle average and then Fairbanks which won the national championship a season ago is still in contention there could be a lot of movement on the leaderboard today as we try to figure out which teams are going to end up on the podium for our overall trophies absolutely and as you said uh, Chicarello has an absolutely unbelievable average so she could pull um, she could pull up Kentucky by quite a bit um, as just as a reminder for everyone uh, every team gets to drop the lowest score so what we're looking for here is that we have uh, some athletes with really high scores and if there is one lower score um, doesn't really matter too much that one will be dropped here's a look at our competitors from Kentucky Braden Pizer there in the middle of your screen shot a 589 in the small bore relay yesterday to qualify for the final and finished sixth in small bore. We'll see what the impressive freshman is capable of today with the air gun. 
He's averaged just below 594 on the season, and it would, if we had to guess, that's probably about where the cutoff line is going to be. Some of these air rifle scores this season have just been sky high, and if we get some high scores, it's going to be really tough to qualify for the eight-person final. Absolutely, and um, looking at the stats here, like we see for West Virginia, out of the five counters, um, we know that three of them have shot a perfect score of 600. So there is a lot of potential here, and there could be an estimate for a final. In my opinion, it might be for five, 594 to 95 maybe, um, but it's, it's really, really difficult. I think it will be very close, and um, you can never say never with these athletes. It might be even higher than estimated. No, we learned yesterday in that small board final, maybe we didn't learn it, we were reminded of it. Every shot counts. Absolutely, and one shot can turn it all around. So that's the beauty of the sport. On the left of your screen are competitors from Navy, Deontay Hayes, Stephanie Milvain, and Marley Duncan shooting for the midshipmen, and also Alaska Fairbanks on your screen. Ellie Spencer, Sara Karasova, and Rachel Charles. Charles is an interesting one. She's a really terrific small bore shooter for the Nooks native of Urbandale, Iowa, but didn't have her best day yesterday in the small bore relay, shot in the first relay, a 579. That's well below her season average, but she's also quite a good air rifle shooter too. Sixth in the country, Charles is in small bore average, and she's also leads Alaska Fairbanks in that category as well, shooting a season high of 599. What about West Virginia? It's almost fitting that the Mountaineers and Horn Frogs are right next to each other. Points 11 through 13 in this relay. Mountaineers points 14 through 16. Horn Frogs for West Virginia in this first relay. Gavin Barnick, Griffin Lake, and Molly McGinn, all of them top 16 in the country in air rifle average. In fact, West Virginia has five of the top 17 averages in the country in this discipline. Meanwhile, TCU is every bit as good. It's Katie Zahn, Stephanie Grunso, and Gene Haverhill shooting in this first air rifle relay. Absolutely. What's interesting about this is that if we look at West Virginia, we have obviously five amazing uh, air gun shooters, but their, their averages are actually slightly lower than TCU. Um, which might, uh, you know, show consistency. They're all very consistent around the same scores. But TCU actually has higher, higher averages for four of the shooters, and one of them is a little bit lower, and that might actually prove to be an advantage as they can drop one mm. lower score. So we will see how this all shakes out for West Virginia. Yeah, you've got four Horned Frogs in the top 12. In the, in the nation in average. So here's a look at live targets. We'll show you these throughout the relay. Look at Gavin Barnick for West Virginia in the middle of that second line. Right now in second place, he's got tens all the way across through his first eight shots. Marley Duncan from Navy, similar trend, seven tens through seven shots. Who's in first? Leah Horvath, bottom left corner of your screen from Ole Miss. Eight for eight through her first attempts. Seventy-five minutes to shoot sixty shots. Athletes can move at their own pace. A little bit different because we don't have these position changes so we won't pause for ciders as we did yesterday in the small bore relay. So that means that this competition will move a little bit more quickly. We talked about rhythm and flow yesterday. How does it apply for air rifle when you don't have to change over to different positions and make adjustments to your rifle? Yeah, so uh, when you're talking about rhythm and flow, um, you would assume that in the air gun it should be better because you don't have those interruptions with the three different positions that you have in small bore. Um, but I, I will say that for, for sure, for certain shooters, including me, um, I preferred small bore because you have a little bit of a mental break with that changeover to the next position. So that's actually an interesting aspect of air gun that we see here that you truly have uh, over an hour of just standing alone with your thoughts, just you and the gun, <laughs> and it can 
get quite intense and maybe a little bit boring at the same time. You get to keep your focus, but you're doing the same thing over and over again for over an hour. And that can be mentally quite straining, um, which is why some people prefer small bore. Our second air rifle relay will start at about 11.30 a.m. A championship coming up today at 2 p.m. Eastern time from the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown. The top eight scorers will qualify for that individual final. Yeah, we see Alaska here on the screen. All of them doing fair, fairly well so far. All, all of them have dropped total to two points. In the middle of your screen is Sarah Karasova of Czech Republic. The junior appeared in the small bore individual final yesterday, taking a quick hydration break in to chat with Fairbanks head coach Will Ante. She is up to 14 shots. 99 through her first 10 and she's hit four tens in a row to bring her to 139 out of a possible 140 so far her average top 20 in the nation just shy of a 595 for the season yeah and you can see um she she has dropped one point so far she shot two 10.0 um, and that can be an indicator that she feels maybe that things aren't quite feeling right. She's pretty close to shooting another nine, and that's when we often take a break to kind of rewind, to uh, check our mindset, and maybe talk, talk things over with the coaches. Cornhuskers from Nebraska, they're the number eight seed in this tournament. Cecilia Ossie, Emma Road, and Mackenzie Strau shooting in this first relay. Yeah, Aussie is definitely going to be the one to look out for um, with small bore. She actually had a um, average season average of just below um, 5.95. She has a, an average of 5.94.3, which might just be enough um, if she can hold up to that average. It might be enough for the final. Aussie placed eighth in the small bore individual championship yesterday. She was last year's individual champion in small bore. She shot a 594, Aussie did, at the PRC, Patriot Rifle Conference Championships, last month. That was good for a top 15 finish, but she didn't appear in the individual final. Here's Air Force, the number three Falcons. Finished the day yesterday in fifth place after two small bore relays. 23-33, the combined team score. Shooters for Air Force left to right on your screen. Victoria Leppert, Morgan Kreb, and Scott Rocket. We know that Rocket is capable, right, Verena, because he did it as a freshman. Back in 2022, he won the individual national title in air rifle, becoming the first Falcon to win an individual championship in either small bore or air gun. Absolutely, and, and doing this as a freshman is, is, is truly remarkable. Um, his season high was also 599, which is only one point short of a perfect score. So we definitely know that he is capable, even though it seems that he has been a little bit inconsistent, his average being 592, his high being 599. So we see that there's some there's some space in between his average and his top score for sure, but we know that he has the potential to pull it off. Rocket taking his time here, one of the slower paces in this first relay. He's only attempted three of a possible 60 shots, two tens and one nine. So here's another look at live targets. And Verena, let's make sure that we go over this because you were reminding me today, uh, this morning before we started, about X's. And if we look at Gavin Barnick, who's in first place right now, he has racked up 10 after 10, 16 of them. And look at all those X's in the middle of your screen there next to those tallies that he's put up. Those are centers, and, and those could be critical. They don't necessarily count to his total score, but could be critical somewhere down the line. 
Absolutely. So I think, uh, especially with um, integer scores with air rifle, there will be at the end probably a lot of the same scores. And what's going to break those ties are the X's. So if you have your scores up, you will see that below are, you know, for example, if they have 10 shots and they shoot 10 tens, you see 100 and then next to it, you see the X's. So that's the count of X's they have, for example, 10 for 10. Um, these are going to be important at the very end, and that's why you want to shoot good 10s, not just 10s. As a reminder for air rifle, we actually have different X's than in small bore. Small bore being anything from a 10.3 and above, and in air gun we have anything uh, above a 10.2, including a 10.2, will be an X. So if we have a tiebreaker scenario with two or more athletes to get into the individual final, those X's or centers will come in handy. Those will essentially be what breaks the tie. So important to keep an eye on that as we continue to try to fill out the top eight competitors for our individual final this afternoon at 2 Eastern. Barnick continuing to post 10 after 10, 18 in a row. Griffin Lake to his right, also on the mark so far with 10 10s through the first portion of his air rifle relay. And uh, uh, Verena also mentioned about integer scoring. No decimal scoring until the championship rounds, the individual championship rounds this afternoon. So whether it's a 10.0, a 10.5, a 10.6, doesn't matter. All counts as a 10, exactly the same for these two relays. Once we get into individual uh, finals this afternoon, we'll move to decimal scoring. And, wow, we, we saw just how different those championship rounds are yesterday when Stephanie Grunso of TCU built up a five-point lead through the first two positions of the small board championship. And then Mary Tucker, who was in last place after her first five-shot series for West Virginia, came all the way back from eighth place to win the individual small board championship for the second time in her career and the first time as a Mountaineer. And absolutely, and all of this happened really just within the standing position. So um, I always say that standing is where you will see the nerves come out. Um, standing is just really where you you have a high chance of maybe sh not shooting a 10, um, unlike prone or kneeling, for example. So we saw yesterday that sometimes the nerves can cost you the final within a couple of shots at times. So uh, very exciting stuff there. Meanwhile, we are looking at Grunso, the grad student from Denmark who placed third in yesterday's individual small bore final. A little bit scattered in her first group of 10. Three nines and six tens through her first nine shots. Yeah, she seems to be struggling similarly to uh, Molly McGinn from West Virginia. Um, since both of those schools are head to head kind of in this, in this match here, it might be that Grunzo's and McGinn's scores will be the ones to be dropped for both teams, depending on how the second relay does. But um, I've seen both shooters do miraculous things, so mm. they might just make it up. If I've seen things where people start out like this and they just don't drop a single point until the very end, and a 597 will still get you in the final. So. Nick Farrell and Verena Zeisberger with you here on day two of the NCAA Rifle Championships live from Morgantown, West Virginia. Second time WVU has hosted the national championships here inside the WVU Coliseum. First time was back in 2019. And West Virginia finished as a runner-up. What about the reigning team champions, Alaska Fairbanks? Yeah, we see, we see some good stuff here from Spencer. I mean, she hasn't dropped a single point. She has 15 Xs, which means that only two tens of her, um, all of her tens were not Xs, which is very impressive. And uh, to be honest, like uh, Karasova and Charles, um, both of them only dropped one point, which is, is truly not, not terrible so far. Um, if, they, if they finish strong, those will be very, very good air gun scores. Fairbanks was in fourth after small bore yesterday 23 37 the team score for the nooks that was just one point behind kentucky for third place and 
when we walked in this morning, Verena, we were gr greeted by just an absolute slew of trophies over to our right here on the broadcast position. We're, we're reminded that it's not just about individual championships, but team championships too. Podium finishes in the individual competitions and podium finishes for the teams in each discipline and for the overall score. That's the big grand prize overall score. Alaska Fairbanks won it last year. West Virginia has won it more than any other school, 19 combined team championships. Yeah, and it would be beautiful to see uh, the 20th one being at home, right? Wouldn't that, that be something? Yes, absolutely. Still a lot of work left to do to make that happen. Back to Air Force with Kreb and Rocket on your screen. Well, West Virginia looking for its 20th team national championship, and with Gavin Barnick setting the pace in this first air rifle relay, maybe the Mountaineers are well on their way. We'll continue to bring you live coverage of day two of the NCAA rifle. Look at all that hardware up for grabs at the Coliseum in Morgantown, West Virginia. The NCAA rifle championships continue from the Mountain State, day two of our competition, air rifle relay number one is underway. Nick Farrell here alongside our analyst, Verena Zeisberger, a former All-American shooter for West Virginia. Here's an update on Kentucky. The Wildcats led by Braden Pizer. He's been terrific, 22 tens to begin his 60-shot air rifle relay. Meanwhile, to his left, Sofia Ciccarello, when we went to break, was in third place overall. She had shot 20 tens in a row, but her 21st shot is a 9.8. Remember that Ciccarello, who appeared in the small bore individual final yesterday, has the top air rifle average in the country, 597.7. She shot 599 on five occasions this season, and technically speaking, that's still possible for her at this juncture. Absolutely. I, I mean, with that type of season average, I absolutely believe that she can pull this off still. I mean, if you look at that, we have so many, um, you know, in-season matches. And over all of those matches, she dropped about two points on average hmm. per 60-shot match, which uh, it's absolutely incredible. And on the right of those competitors is Jaden Thompson for Kentucky. Shot a 577 yesterday in small bore. Her season average is just one tenth of a point shy of a 593. Fifth year from Bloomington, Illinois. Meanwhile, we had mentioned for West Virginia, Gavin Barnick. He is pacing the Mountaineers with a terrific score, all tens through his first 22 attempts. Yeah, and he, he continues to shoot just only X's. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see what he's going to do. Uh, he actually just, uh, his last match, which was the conference championships, he shot a perfect score. So mm -hmm. let's see whether he can pull this off again. Meanwhile, teammates Griffin Lake and Molly McGinn. A little bit of a different story. Lake, the freshman from Pennsylvania, has popped four nines in a row. Yeah, this is this is really interesting to see here on the scorecard. Um, you see that all of his nines are really bottom right, and that's that's a very um, weird spot to be in because either he did something um, technically that caused those shots to be um, bottom right, but it might also be something with the sights that he might have to click his sights to move his group up. So that's, that's a difficult decision for him to make to analyze. Was it me or is it something else? Um, and we will see if he makes the, the right decision to correct this error. Meanwhile, Molly McGinn seems to be recovering from her um, quite rough start um, to her. For her, like really, air rifle has been very, very good. I would say best season of her career. So yeah. this start was definitely not what she wanted. Well, we still have these live targets up. Look at the TCU Horn Frogs on the third row on your screen there. Katie Zahn in fifth place, really shooting a nice series here in the third stage of her 
60 shot relay. Meanwhile, Stephanie Grunso has put up seven tens in a row. And she really recovered equally well. Like she, she has not dropped a, 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 a point in her second series. So she had a rough start, but but we know that she she has big potential here, and she seems to pull it off. Fran, I want to go back to what you were just telling us about Griffin Lake and making adjustments. How much of that has to be done on an individual level, and how much of it involves coaching in the moment as things are going on? Yeah, so that's a good question. I mean, I would say that um, you want to get your athletes to a point where they know what to do in the moment. Usually you don't want to have to rely on coaching too much as you're approaching uh, you know, game day. And certainly in that situation, you don't want to have to rely on your coaches. Um, first of all, it just makes you an, a more independent shooter. And then also, if you have to get out of position, walk back to your coaches, it interrupts your flow. It makes you uh, get out of position, which you have to find again, so you lose time. So there's really only advantages to being able to make those decisions by yourself. Well, I know that some folks might roll their eyes when, when you make analogies about different sports, but th this isn't we're on a basketball court, right? And this isn't like basketball, where if you need to run a set play, the coach calls a timeout and draws something up in the huddle, and the players go and execute it. It really has to be done on a more individual level. Absolutely. I think um, in our sport, you have to be quite independent with decision making. Um, it's really you up there on the line. Um, there's definitely still a preference for people who want to come back to the line, talk to, co to the coaches. Um, me personally, I only did that if, you know, things were really going downhill, like quite, quite terribly. Um, but I think it, it's a lot of independent decisions in the sport. Good marks from the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. They were in last place in our overall team competition after small bore yesterday, 23-17 through those two small bore relays. But right now, three Cornhuskers situated in the top 15 in this first air rifle relay led by Emma Road, the sophomore from Kempton, PA. She's just outside the top 20 in the nation in season average in air gun. Leads the team with a 594 average. Yeah, she's she's doing really well so far. Let's see if she can keep it up. Um, 597 uh, season high so far, career high 598. So she definitely has it in her to to shoot a, sh uh, a good a good score for the team as well as a score that might her get into a final. One nine in her first series, then just completed a perfect second series. I think that Road may have just gotten a little round of applause from the Nebraska contingent that's here, or maybe it was for Barnick. Of course, there might be a bit of a partisan crowd here in Morgantown as Barnick has now completed three perfect series. Absolutely. He's halfway there on, um, on the road for a perfect score. And, I mean, that would be incredible if he posts a perfect score in the conference championship and then at NCAAs. Oh my the most the two most important uh, matches truly of the season. Right now, Barnick is setting the pace for our group of 24 here in this first air rifle relay. Alaska Fairbanks also putting in some great numbers over the last few minutes. Ellie Spencer, 23 shots, all tens, and Sara Karasova has also put together multiple perfect series. She's into the second half of her air rifle relay. Fairbanks still within striking distance, definitely of a podium finish. Nooks were one point behind Kentucky and in fourth place after small bore action yesterday. Yeah, as for as for rankings, it seems that W and TCU are um, quite ahead of the rest of the team. So it, it might look like it's going to be a battle between W and TCU, and every everybody um, the the following three teams are really all within reach for third place. So nothing is decided. And at the end of the day, we we don't really know what happens. So I could it could 
risky anything at the end of the day. Looking at Fairbanks now, Rachel Charles at the very bottom of your screen chatting with fourth year Nooks head coach Will Ante. Two Antes coaching here this weekend at the Coliseum. You've got Will Ante, a former Mountaineer leading Fairbanks. And his father, Mike Ante, a West Virginia Sports Hall of Famer leading the number seven Navy midshipman at this national championship. There's the numbers for Spencer and Karasova. Terrific stuff from Spencer. She's also perfect so far. And Karasova just pings another 10 there. Absolutely. She seems very confident. She has a good pace um, shooting uh, fairly, fairly quickly, which seems that um, seems to be the case that she's not really questioning too much. She's just in the zone doing her thing. So that's kind of what you want to see. Meanwhile, Charles has stepped off the line after shooting back to back nines. She had one nine in each of her first two series, plus the latest two nines to bring her to a 226 so far. Oh, and Karasova just shot a nine. Mm. We'll see how she's going to come back. She takes a sip of her water bottle, take a little bit of a break, but um, she doesn't seem to want to come off the line. So, so that career high, 599, no longer within reach for Karasova, but certainly still capable of qualifying for the individual air rifle final. She was a finalist in yesterday's small board championship, placing seventh. TCU Horn Frogs. Granzo and uh, Katie's on. Katie's on, still doing really well. Only dropped two points. Granzo also still very reco recovering very well. Um, her first season uh, her first series, excuse me, was a little bit rough, but she hasn't she hasn't made a single mistake ever since. And what's interesting is that most of these teams are shooting the same three in the first relay for air rifle as they did yesterday for small bore. I think, by my count, Verena, TCU is the only squad that made a change. Yesterday, it was Zahn Grunso and Stephanie Allen shooting in the first small bore relay. Today, it's Zahn Grunso and Gene Haverhill, who you, who you see there in the middle of your screen. I'm just curious, is, is that a preference thing, a strategy thing? I realize we can't see into the minds of the coaches and players, but what do you think about that? I mean, that's that's a really interesting point, and I don't want to speak for any coaches. I don't know why they would want to do that. I know that there is something to be said about um, shooters uh, or athletes preferences uh, certain people like to compete early in the morning I would say a lot of people do it's it's a little tougher to wait around and wait for your teammates to finish so I would think that if uh, one of your athletes has a strong preference you would want to take that into account um, why they did not do that for yesterday if that was the reason I'm not quite sure but that's definitely an interesting change Horn Frogs trail West Virginia by six points through the two small bore relays. But as we mentioned earlier, TCU is a terrific air rifle team. Four of the top 12 averages in the nation. Three of those athletes competing right now, including Haverhill, who's number 11th nationally in air rifle average this season. Yeah, I would say uh, air rifle-wise, they're definitely the strongest team up here. So that that is why it is good for West Virginia to have that six-point lead. Um, we'll see how they perform. It's a nice question to have, but uh, TCU is very, very strong in air gun. Meanwhile, small bore is really West Virginia's discipline. The Mountaineers have five of the top ten averages in that discipline. and. Really, though, Verena, if not for that big number from Mary Tucker, a 596 yesterday in the second relay to lead all competitors, West Virginia probably does not have a lead going into today's air rifle relays. Yes, that is very true. Uh, Mary Tucker kind of turned things around for West Virginia yesterday. Um, all, all four of the others kind of shot a little bit under their average, maybe. They've done really, really well all of the season so we know that they had more in them but it really seems like they gave it their all and it was just a little bit um under their average which just shows you how you know with that one day at ncaa championships if you underperform it might cost you everything so 
good for West Virginia to have Mary Tucker in there. There's another look at your team standings. West Virginia on top, TCU second. You see Graz, it's a beautiful, beautiful series right here. Um, she might have two, two close nines, but um, the, the group seems to be really good. Leah Horvath really doing very well as also. Only dropped one nine so far, but she's, she seems to be in the zone carrying on. Christy Durding and Martina Graz also shooting for Ole Miss. Rebels making their fifth appearance at the NCAA Championships and their first under their new head coach, Rachel Martin. They've really been solid. They've made few appearances over the course of their program history, but four, uh, sorry, top four finishes for the Rebels in each of the last three national championships, including a podium finish back in 2021. Yeah, this program really has been doing very well for themselves. And we get a round of applause. Oh, it's for Gavin Barnick. For Gavin Barnick, on, only two series away from a perfect score, taking a break now, um, maybe talking things over with the coaches. We'll see what, what he wants to do, but he's on a very, very good road here to having a great score. Oh, exciting stuff. We had such an exciting first day yesterday with that fantastic small bore individual championship. Yes, absolutely. Here's Griffin Lake and Molly McGinn for West Virginia. Lake trip being a little bit inconsistent, starting out with 100, then plummeting to a 95, and now he's back to a perfect 90 so far. Uh, nine, nine for nine tens. Two great series for Barnick. One disappointing one as he's about to arrive at the midpoint of his relay. His next shot will be his 30th. Meanwhile, McGinn is midway through her third series. Just shooting another nine. Back to Fairbanks. Karasova has fallen a little bit off the pace. She was terrific for a period of time and then has had back-to-back -back series with 99s. So still in contention for a spot in the final. But meanwhile, it's Spencer who, just like Barnick, is through three series and has hit all tens. Barnick now through four series, but at his midpoint, he was also perfect just as Spencer is. Yes, and it is it is nice to see how the crowd just gets into it. Um, I, I remember my first championships, actually. Um, someone was almost about to shoot a 600, and the whole crowd was going crazy. Wow. She actually ended up shooting her nine, I believe, in the last three shots. And until uh. then, the whole crowd was just um, really biting their fingernails. So it's, it's nice to see that, you know, in the sport that seemingly not much goes on, there's a lot going on, actually, and people who get into the sport, they're just absolutely living for it. Well, look, at I, I posted about this earlier this morning before our webcast began, but we noticed that there was a tailgating tent out in the parking lot Absolutely, today. Absolutely, yeah. Mean, <laughs> in the rain in Morgantown. In the rain, rain in, in Morgantown. Morgantown. The, the Mountaineer fans tailgate the national championship. How about that? We'll step aside for a quick break. The continuation of the national air rifle relay right after this.
back in 2019 when the National Rifle Championships were hosted here at the WBU Coliseum in Morgantown. A national attendance record was set. Mountaineer Nation has been a great host again here for the 2024 championships. Fat head cutouts, roars from the crowd. And so far, West Virginia is putting together a really great relay from one individual. Gavin Barnick, the junior from Wisconsin, is perfect through his first four series. 400 through 40 shots. He's back up to the line after a short conversation with 18th year head coach John Hammond as he tries to make a run at a perfect score. And again, for everybody, as you see on the scorecard right there, it says 400, which means means he shot four hundreds per series. And you see the 35X right next to it. That just means that he had 35Xs out of those 40 shots and that means 35 shots were 10.2 uh, or above. So he's shooting some really good groups here. One other athlete is also still in pursuit of perfection in this first air rifle relay. It's Ellie Spencer of Alaska Fairbanks. Yeah, a 370 through 37 shots. She actually has a really fast rhythm, so she she seems to take her time by taking breaks, but when she does shoot, she has a very quick pace um, and speaks to her uh, and also seems to be fairly confident. Um, some people slow down when they're on the, on the way to a perfect score and they, they get a little more hesitant, a little more cautious, and they slow down. So far, uh, she seems not to feel that way at all. Spencer on the left there, zooming in on her. And we've had one nine from Barnick. His first shot in his fifth series uh, is that, a nine. That is just such a difficult place to be in. I mean, he definitely still has a great score, but coming back after a long break and kind of trying to find your position and then shooting a nine, uh, that, that's tough your, for your confidence in, in your position and what you're doing. But he followed it up with a 10, so he's back on track. Very well handled. Back to Spencer. True freshman from Boise, Idaho, and a product of Timberline High School. At point five, she now is in the lead. There's a 10 there. She actually has uh, 36 X's, which is also, also very good. Spencer, a former under-18 national air rifle champion. That is just a, such a beautiful group. That has to be said. It just <laughs> It's perfect, perfectly round. Usually what we're looking for is, is a very tight group. We don't really want, uh, you know, weird shots uh, to the right or to the left um, or, you know, everything in one spot but just a little low. So she, she has a beautiful group right there. Back to West Virginia, and while Barnick is getting back into his rhythm with back-to-back -back tens after that nine, Griffin Lake and Molly McGinn still have some work to do. Lake has posted two perfect series, but it was that second series, a 95, that's going to weigh down his score a little bit. Meanwhile, McGinn, her first three series, 97, 98, and 99, She's at a 3.03 through 31 attempts. See Karasova almost done with her match. Yeah, that is a rapid pace. With with 30 minutes left on the clock, that's that's uh, that's fast. But with two tens, that would give her a 5.97. Yeah, that will get her into the final. I'm I mean, if nothing crazy happens, I'm almost confident to say that that will give get her into the final. She was a key contributor last year for the Nooks on the road to a 2023 team national championship. The 11th in Alaska Fairbanks program history. Yeah, and really, um, I would say like air gun is definitely uh, not her specialty, but she's, she's an excellent air gun shooter as we can see here. And she's shooting well above her season average of 594. 
Um, so to do that and finishing was a 596, 48 X's. That is a that is a great score to put up there. Terrific championship so far from Katasova. She shot a, shot a 593 yesterday in the first small bore relay. That was second best among all competitors and the best in her relay. We'll have to see if this 596 stands up as the top score in this air rifle relay. It should be good enough for a spot in the individual championship, which starts today at 2 p.m. Eastern. A terrific round for the junior from the Czech Republic, Karasova. Going to the Wildcats, seeing Pizer right there, doing very well for himself, only dropping one point so far, and he's into his fifth series. 39 X's out of a possible 43 so far for Pizer to continue to be impressed by this exceptional true freshman from Texas. Next time we have Chicarella who seems to be struggling a little bit with the past two series, um, dropping four points after starting out with two perfect mm. series. And there we have the scores on the board. shooting just a 9.9 .9. and you see like she shot a 9.8 and a 9.9 .9 in the series which as a shooter you will if you know any shooters you will probably hear them complain about you know oh, I shot so many 9.9s and they might as well be tens and that's really kind of it's it just sometimes heartbreaking because that 9.9 .9 really might as well be a 10.0, but it might cost you a final. It might cost you the championships. It's it's just really such a tiny difference, but it can make all the difference. Talking genuinely about a fraction of a millimeter at Absolutely, that point. Absolutely, yeah. Same thing with uh, Thompson shooting a 9.9, .9. and that really is, uh, you know, something that, certain teams might complain about at the end of the day that they felt like they had you know really decent groups but just a lot of a lot of 9.9s that they didn't really call and so they might have ended up with a, a worse team score but really the, the margin for 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 between a 10.0 and a 9.9 .9 is 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 just barely anything thompson concludes her fourth series it's her best one so far 99 on series number four. Let's go back to TCU. Zahn and Grunso, solid so far. Zahn on the left, Grunso in the center of your screen. In fact, Zahn is on to her final series with three perfect series under her belt. Yeah, they're both doing really well. Grunzo with three hundreds and then also uh, Zahn on the way to her third hundred in a row. Um, they seem to be very, ha they seem to be having their, their mind in the game for sure. If Zahn is able to complete another perfect series, that would put her at a, at a 598 for the relay. So far, only one athlete is done. Sara Karasova of Alaska Fairbanks with a 596. Everyone else still taking competitive shots. Still a lot of time left in this relay, under 30 minutes to go. It's a 75 minute relay compared to the 90 minute relays yesterday for small bore. No position changes, no pauses in between for Siders. 60 shots all from the standing position. Just shy of 33 feet from the target. We're going to step aside for another quick break. The completion of air rifle relay number one is coming your way right after this. You're watching the 2024 NCAA Rifle Championships.
Live coverage of the 2024 NCAA Rifle Championships continuing from the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown, West Virginia. Nick Farrell here alongside Verena Zeisberger, the former Mountaineer All-American. And right now it's a nook from Alaska Fairbanks that has our attention. 15 shots to go for Ellie Spencer, still in the pursuit of perfection in this first air rifle relay. Absolutely, and her, her group is just perfect as well. I mean, look at that. It's right up in the center. Um, she just she just seems to shoot with such confidence. Uh, she takes her breaks, as we can see here, with some dry fire, some holding to check her position, check her technique. But she has a very good rhythm when she does take actual shots, and it seems to really help her. Meanwhile, the other student athlete who we thought might be on the pace for a perfect 600 was West Virginia's Gavin Barnick. He did have 1-9 at the beginning of his fifth series. He had a 99 in that series, but he's been back on tens ever since. Three shots to go to complete a 599 if he can hit three more tens. And that just has to be said. It's it's a great, great comeback. I think a lot of people, if they they shot so well, they shoot 1-9, that, that sometimes messes with your head a lot. And I think for some people, things start to fall apart after that, but not for Barnick. He just he just kept right at it and just kept doing what he was doing and, and is probably um, going to finish strong here. Speaking of strong finishes, maybe Braden Pizer of Kentucky is going to enjoy one of those. He's into his final series as well. And just like Barnick has only shot 1-9 through his first five series. Final two shots here for Gavin Barnick of West Virginia. Not only is this critical for an individual qualification position, it's huge for the team scoring. And just been doing so well, both uh, both the conference championship and and now this are well above his average. So he's just been doing better and better. He shot a 600 in the GARC qualifying round at the conference championships last month. Another went on to place 10. another 10 indeed. He went on to place third in that individual final at the conference championships. One more to go for a 599. Taking his time with this last shot. And unfortunately, it is a nine, but still a beautiful score of 598. That to post that at the NCAA, and he gets a round of applause. Very well deserved. Absolutely so. He became the eighth Mountaineer to score a perfect 600 in air rifle with the GARC Championships. Concludes a 598. An absolutely exceptional relay from Bornick, who is the relay leader with that 598, but both Spencer of Alaska Fairbanks and Pizer of Kentucky could jump past him here if, if either can complete a really strong finish to this relay. Spencer's still perfect. Oh, my God. The tension. The <laughs> two shots to go, and she's on the road for 600. That is insane. And I bet the, the crowd is biting their fingernails as well right now. Well, she's still got one more series to go after this. This is her 49th shot. She's still oh. got a ways to go, but absolutely seems You're capable. Correct. I mean, she is just absolutely exceptional today. Again, we're talking about a true freshman here in Spencer. And she has been, uh, she is a little bit ahead of Barnick in the sense she hasn't dropped a nine yet, and she is in her second to last series, which is when uh, Barnick dropped his nine. So she's she's still on a very good path here. Needs to ping one more 10 for a fifth perfect series in this air rifle relay. 
I love how the crowd is just so supportive mm -hmm. of these athletes after each hundred. When they know it counts, they try to cheer you up. So that's great to see that you have good, good fans in the crowd. Just rejected this shot. Probably felt like something was wrong. Maybe her process, maybe something in her position. Taking another breath, a second to, to come back to what she wants to do. And we see Katie Zahn just wrapped it up with a 598, an excellent score. We might actually see a few 598s here, 599s, which honestly might, uh, might, might make my prediction for, for scores to enter the final incorrect. It might be <laughs> higher by quite a bit. So uh, we, we will see what happens here. We said 594, 595 might be enough. It might be more like Absolutely. 596 and up. Absolutely. And, and this is just, uh, yeah, scores are getting more and more crazy. Athletes are just uh, absolutely, they, they train like professionals. They're just getting better every year. One more 10 from Spencer, fifth perfect series. Getting another round of applause. One more to go. Meanwhile, in second right now is Braden Pizer, who has four shots to go for Kentucky. We'll take a look at him now. He has the potential for a maximum score of 599. That would be a career high for him. He shot his career high at NCAA qualifiers a few weeks ago in February, a 598. I mean, this kid has been incredible, Verena. He shot his career high. Again, we're talking about a freshman. His career high in small board at the Gark Championships in February and then followed that up a couple of weeks later with a career high in air rifle. Yes, absolutely, and uh, I can't. I just can't emphasize enough the, the fact that you said it, it's a freshman. It's his first year. It's it's just amazing to, to see somebody do that well, just coming in and, and posting these types of scores is, is great. Three more to go. Max score possible, 599. And as you can see, he's actually turned uh, in a different way as the other two shooters. That's because he's a left-handed shooter, so everything is the other way around. Um, there's quite a few who believe that, you know, if you're left-handed or right-handed, you should change your position accordingly. So that's why we see him turn the other way. Two shots left for Braden Pizer of Kentucky. Yeah, we see he's really taking his time here. He knows these two count. Let's quickly jump to the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. Emma Rode has put together a handful of perfect series. 99, 100, 99, 100, 99. Will she finish her sixth series with a 100? That would bring her maximum possible score to a 597, which ought to be good enough to qualify if she can finish with a perfect series. Her teammate Cecilia Ossie qualified for the individual small bore final yesterday placed eighth in that final shot of 591 in her small bore relay. Yeah. Meanwhile, Pizer has one more shot to go for Kentucky. He's just taken it. And he gets a roar from the crowd. Braden Pizer, the true freshman of 599. Absolutely incredible. I mean, that is just that that's fantastic and I mean, if you if you look at his average, that would be a 593. So he's just well above his average and just has done extremely well. The Wildcats might have a gem in this exceptional freshman. Sofia Ciccarello qualified for the small board championship yesterday alongside Pizer. Ciccarello has not had the air rifle relay that she might have liked, but Maybe still an opportunity to close that out here in her final series. She's sitting on a 5-14 at the moment with eight shots to go. 
but the fantastic freshman Braden Pizer, 599. A career high in air rifle, besting his previous career high of a 598 set just a few weeks ago at NCAA qualifiers. More action, Alaska Fairbanks. We see Spencer with another 10.8. She just seems so confident to have such a great, I mean, she still, with five shots left, she still hasn't dropped a point, but more than that, her group is just amazing. 10.7, 10.6, 10.6. Now she just shot another 10.8. That's that's just incredible. Let's see if she can keep, keep it up. Meanwhile, Charles. Her teammate, the sophomore from Iowa, has just concluded her air rifle relay with a 594. Spencer, five shots to go. That 594 for Charles, admittedly, might not be enough. It might not even be top eight in this relay, let alone in the competition as a whole. Absolutely. Our estimations were off there by quite a bit. Um, these athletes are a lot better than, than expected. My goodness, the air rifle scores have just gone up and up and up, and there have been some huge marks posted all across the country this year. Absolutely. We've had two perfect scores in air rifle among the qualifiers in this tournament this season. Barnick had one of them for West Virginia back at the GARC Championships. What if Elijah Spencer can post the third perfect score of the season here at the National Championships? With three shots to go. Another fantastic freshman. Beautiful. Two shots to go. And you can see not even a hint of nervousness in her face. It's just, she just keeps doing what she's doing. She doesn't overthink it. She's not hesitant. She just keeps her rhythm. Absolutely beautiful. Big spot here for Spencer, not just on an individual level, but again, as the team championship really heats up today, Alaska trailed Kentucky by just one point through small board. Incredible stuff oh. here. And it comes down to the last shot here. Looking back to her coaching staff, led by head coach Will Ante, the former Mountaineer. One shot away from perfection at the national championships. Taking a breath before she loads. Communicating with the coaches. Projected the shot. There's just a light murmur in the crowd. Spencer goes for history here at the national championships. Absolutely incredible, perfect score finishing with a beautiful 10. That's sensational from Ellie Spencer, the true freshman from Boise, Idaho. A perfect 600 at the NCAA Championships. It's a career high for Spencer and is just the third perfect 600 in air rifle this season on the national scene. Wow, that is exceptional stuff. And her coach so happy, as is the crowd. Everybody's just loving it. Great to see from a freshman. That is absolutely just incredible. 
Still more competition to go, but Spencer has most certainly qualified for the individual championship for the first time in her career with that perfect 600. Just behind her is Braden Pizer of Kentucky, a 599. One shot in that third series off perfection in his relay. Gavin Bornick for West Virginia has the fourth best score. He posted two nines, one in each of his final two series. And in third is Katie Zahn, who was the silver medalist yesterday in the small bore final and appears headed for the Air Rifle Individual Championship as well after posting a 598 herself. And just wrapping up here is Stephanie Brunso for TCU. A terrific 596 for her after what was just a devastating end to her small bore championship. Yes, she's taking home the bronze medal in individual small bore, but it had to have been heartbreaking to experience that Mary Tucker comeback as, as Grunso was on the losing end of that championship final. Exactly, but she kind of reversed that today. I mean, if you look at it, the four nines that she dropped were all in the first series. So that's what I was talking about. I, I've seen amazing things just like this where she shoots 500. She did not drop a single point. That is absolutely exceptional and shows for a strong mental game here. And a quick note that Grunso, by shooting 49 centers, has one-upped Karasova of Alaska Fairbanks in that tiebreaker category. 49 X's for Grunso, 48 for Karasova. And so if 596 becomes the cutoff line, those X's could be critical. Karasova technically in sixth place on that tiebreaker. Yeah, with another relay to go, the, the cutoff for the final might might really be quite high. We've seen some exceptional shooting here. Gavin Bornick of West Virginia had a perfect 600 at the Gark Championships. Stephanie Allen of TCU, who will shoot in the second relay, had a perfect 600 back during the fall season in September against Navy. The third perfect score out of all of these NCAA qualifiers is netted by a true freshman, Ellie Spencer of Alaska Fairbanks, who just put together one of the best air rifle relays you'll ever see at a national championship and did it as a true freshman. Here we have our two, two last Mountaineers finishing up their, their last series of, of the 60-shot air rifle. These are important shots here for Griffin Lake and Molly McGinn of West Virginia, both of them into the final half of their final series. And though it's unlikely that either of them would score high enough to qualify for the individual final again, these shots are so important for the combined team championship that will be determined after the second air rifle relay, which starts at about 11.45 Eastern time. Absolutely, and it's it's really interesting to see here. Um, TCU seems to have done it a little bit better in air gun. So these last few shots of um, Lake and McGinn are really crucial. Here's Emma Road. One more shot to go for the Cornhusker. Maximum possible score for the relay, 595. And she probably knows that a 595 might just be enough to get in a final her without knowing the scores that her her fellow athletes put up so she knows that with these with this last shot she might or might not make the final a 10 here might at least give her a shot only one athlete qualified from the second small bore relay and it was mary tucker seven qualified qualifiers from the first small bore relay yesterday so maybe there is room for one more from this first air gun relay. And she she does it with a 10.0. She finishes with a 5.95. So she's at least given herself a chance. Emma Road from Kempton, PA, a 595 in the first air rifle relay. Just a notch above her season average of 594 and a half. 
the former state rifle champion in Pennsylvania, just to our north here in West Virginia, might have done enough to reach our individual final, which starts today at 2 p.m. Eastern. Okay, looking at live targets here, those two shooters for West Virginia who are still at the line, Lake and McGinn, have two shots to go. Meanwhile, look at that third line, Verena, TCU, Zahn and Grunso posting two of the top five scores, and Haverhill with a 593. That's a solid score, too. Absolutely, and that's uh, that's why it's so so crucial to keep everybody in mind. I mean, we still have two more athletes to go, but so far uh, TCU has done a very good job of kind of trying to catch up um, through the air gun matches here. West Virginia had a six-point lead after day one through the small bore competition. A 10 from Lake would cap his relay at a 591. Both of them seem to be on the track uh, for a 591 each if they can finish with a 10. Projecting the shot. And McGinn finished absolutely beautifully, just like Spencer with a 10.8. Very well done. 591 for McGinn to conclude her relay. And you can see she stays in position for her teammate to finish. And Lake just off the mark for a 9.8 to conclude his air rifle relay at a 590. So we'll have to tally up the scores during our intermission between these two air rifle relays. Our second relay starts at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. So just about an hour from now. West Virginia had a six-point lead over TCU after the small bore action. But even Haverhill's low score of 593 in this relay is better than the 591 from McGinn and the 550 from Lake. The strategy, of course, is that you get to drop one low score. If Haverhill's score is the low score for TCU, that means the Horned Frogs are going to be in business. Absolutely, and that's why uh, it can just turn so quickly. I mean, Haverhill, if that is the score that needs to be dropped, that's really not bad at all for TCU. And if we see a couple of more low scores from WU, we truly don't know what's going to happen. So here's a look at our top eight scorers from the first air rifle relay, led by that perfect score from Elijah Spencer followed by another exceptional score from another true freshman in Braden Pizer of Kentucky, a 599. So those are the top eight from this relay, but they may not necessarily all qualify for the individual final. That will be determined after the second relay, which is coming up one hour from now at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. Our live coverage of the National Rifle Championships will continue then. For Verena Zeisberger, I'm Nick Farrell. Thanks for being with us. We hope to see you again for Air Rifle Relay number two at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Talk to you then. Live coverage of the 2024 NCAA Rifle Championships continues live from the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown, West Virginia. We're moments away from the start of our second air rifle relay on day two of the national championships. Nick Farrell here along with former all-gark shooter for West Virginia, Verena Zeisberger. 
And Verena, we had some tremendous shooting earlier this morning in our first session, including a perfect score by Ellie Spencer, the true freshman of Alaska Fairbanks. It would appear that the baseline to get into the individual final is going to be a 494 or higher. Right now, Leah Horvath with a 494 and 49 centers would be the first person from that first relay out. Absolutely. I think we're, uh, the, the line for the final is definitely going to go up. I think that four, 594s are usually scores that we see quite a bit, 595s as well. And above that is where, where the air gets a little bit thinner. Um, and we also have the individual qualifiers in this relay. And f judging from their season average, um, they all have the potential to make it into the final. So it's, it's going to be tough to get in. The command to start from Chief Range Officer Earl Litherland has been delivered, and we're underway in our second air rifle relay. Two competitors from each of our eight nationally qualifying schools will shoot in this second relay, along with those six individual competitors from Ohio State, Murray State, Memphis, Akron, and Georgia Southern. And we're looking right now at TCU's two competitors, Stephanie Allen and Nicole Hogan. Allen, one of the top 12 shooters in the country on small bore average this season. The native of Connecticut averages over 595 and has shot a perfect 600 this season. We saw Spencer become just the third athlete in this field to shoot a perfect score earlier today and did so on the biggest stage at the national championships. Yes, I think she actually is along with uh, her teammate Grunzo. She's the only one in that team that has a has shot a perfect score in her career. So she's going to definitely be one of the ones to look out for for uh, final qualifications. We're not only focusing on the individual qualifiers for this afternoon's final, which will begin at roughly 2 p.m. Eastern time. This is the final chance to contribute a score to the overall team scoring. Right now, after a really strong air rifle relay, TCU has regained its lead over WVU by just two points. TCU 41-34, West Virginia 41-32 in the team scoring. But there's still a lot that has to happen there, right? We have to calculate these two scores, and then we're going to drop one more score, the lowest score for each team from air rifle, before we can determine our team champion for 2024. Exactly, and uh, it was actually kind of an interesting twist of events here. Um, as of yesterday, it kind of looked like it was going to be a battle between TCU and WU mainly, but now we actually see that and one, two, three, and four. So TCU, WU, Alaska, and UK um, actually are all in uh, in contention for for the win. Um, University of Kentucky actually has to make up quite a bit of. of a difference of 14 points, but it is not as um, it's it's not as telling as it was yesterday. Now we know that everything anything can really happen. Four teams in competition for the championship, and the other two podium spots: TCU, West Virginia, Fairbanks, the reigning champion, and Kentucky. Wildcats won the national championships in 2021 and 2022. The Nooks maybe still have an opportunity to go back to back. Looking at Kentucky shooters, Emmy Sellers and Allison Bissler, it appears that Braden Pizer with his 599 in the first air rifle relay is already bound for the individual final. Will one of his teammates, Sellers or Bissler, be able to join him? Sellers is top 25 in the nation in shooting average in air rifle. And just started out with 210, so coming on strong. Here's a look at a few of your individual qualifiers. In the middle is Ohio State's Derek Kaiser at point twenty-three. On his left is Gavin Perkowski of Akron. And on Kaiser's right, the final point in our 20 two-point competition here is Georgia Southern's Emma Poilman. On the other end, one of our individual qualifiers from Murray State, Allison Henry, is off to a terrific start with six tens to begin her relay. 
to Alaska Fairbanks now, the reigning national champions. On the right is Akahito Shimizu, who formerly shot for West Virginia. In 2021, he placed ninth at the NCAA championships as a Mountaineer, just missing out on the national final. He's top 15 in the country in air rifle average and is definitely capable of being in the hunt for a top eight finish in a spot in the individual championship. Absolutely, and I feel like uh, historically for him, he's always been an air rifle specialist. Mm. He actually started out shooting small board just when he started his college career at WVU. So he hasn't been shooting small bore for all that long, but has been shooting really excellent scores. But um, typically he has been a, always a very consistent and very good air rifle shooter. He's one of your former teammates, right? Farina? Absolutely, yes. We were talking with him yesterday uh, right before the small bore final about making the switch from Appalachia to Alaska. He says he loves it out there at Alaska Fairbanks, of course, is, I'm sure is beautiful. I've never been to Alaska, but you have, right? Yeah, we actually went on a trip there uh, last last January, and uh, it was absolutely beautiful. And uh, Akihito actually said he, he doesn't mind to mind the cold, so he <laughs> should be fine in Alaska. Not to mention it's a much shorter plane trip to uh, go back home to Japan to visit family, more like 13 or 14 hours absolutely. to and from Alaska than the full-day 24-hour trip that it would take to get to Pittsburgh and then make the drive down to Morgantown. It is an awful trip for sure. <laughs> it is an awful trip. Looking at Air Force now, Panina D'Souza and Lauren Hurley, the two shooters in this session for the Falcons, who were the number three seed but have slipped into fifth place in team scoring through our first three relays. And with both, you can really see how they're taking their time. I mean, they've posted two shots so far, and we are about seven minutes into the match. So um, taking over over three minutes per shot, that's, that's you know, quite slow. And you see that a lot of the times with athletes in the beginning, they're really uh, taking a lot of holds, doing a lot of dry firing to really make sure that they're ready to take the shot. It's interesting because the first relay featured three Falcons, two of whom are more or less small bore specialists. Kreb is top 20 in the nation in small bore average. Rocket has really good small bore numbers and has won an individual air rifle title, so he can definitely do both. But when it comes to D'Souza and Hurley, both of them are top 20 in the nation in air rifle average. D'Souza ranks 18th, and Hurley, a native of Oregon, 20th. Absolutely. They're going to be the air, air rifle specialists um, in, in the Air Force crowd, so we're going to... Where they, they might actually turn things around for Air mm -hmm. Force and, and maybe get them on the podium. Actually, correct correct that. Um, Alaska is uh, number three so far. Air Force is actually number five, which is uh, backed by quite a bit of points. So we have a 21-point uh, drop from University of Kentucky in number four to number five. And that, for anybody who's not really in the shooting community, that will be very difficult to make up for in just one air rifle relay. Reminder that those aggregate scores that we're sharing with you are official for now, but are going to change because we're going to drop the lowest score for each team in air rifle at the end of this second relay. Here's a look at TCU, Gene Haverhill and Nicole Hogan. Haverhill, exceptional air rifle shooter, 11th in the country, coming off a season high, career high performance. Check that at the Patriot Rifle Conference Championships back in February. She shot a 598 to qualify for the individual final and then ultimately placed sixth in the PRC in that championship round. Yes, and it will be very interesting to keep an eye on those two as we have the scoreboard up here. Um, we see the two TCU shooters so far dropped combined one point, mm -hmm. and if we compare that with the West Virginia shooters, um, they have dropped two points, and we know that the two teams, TCU and WU, are only two points apart combined. Well, Mary Tucker, who was the individual small bore champion, is already at it again, while her teammate, Matt Sanchez, has dropped two points in his first series. Tucker is 8 for 8, 8 tens 
and puts her in third place. Quickly, while we have these live scores up, oh, they just flashed away. No problem. Those X's that you saw, we just want to remind you, are centers. Those could come in handy in the form of tiebreakers if necessary later on. So we'll be keeping an eye on that, not just scoring from Air Rifle. Well, there she is, Mary Tucker, the woman of the hour yesterday. What an absolutely exceptional comeback. She was in eighth place in the small bore individual final after her first series and came all the way back to win gold. She did it in 2021. She won small bore when she was competing for Kentucky as a sophomore, back with the gold medal at the NCAA National Championships in 2024 as a fifth year. And by the way, maybe history will repeat itself. Don't know if you subscribe to that type of thinking. In 21, Tucker swept the individual gold medals in both small bore and air rifle. She's halfway there, but she's got a lot to do here in air rifle today. She's number five in the nation in air rifle average. Yeah, maybe she can do it again. And I, I would say, like, one thing that definitely sets her apart is that not only is she exceptionally, you know, talented for, for rifle and she has a great technique, she's very, very balanced. I mean, as you see, she she's champion in both air gun and small bore, which is, is quite hard to do. Um, a lot of the times you don't, and she just finished with her first hundred. Um, a lot of the times you see that shooters have a specialty, either air gun or small bore. With her, you really can't tell which ones is her specialty because she's just exceptional at both. And I do believe the one thing that sets her apart is that her mental her mental game is exceptional as well. She uh, does not get discouraged by failure. If anything, it just motivates her harder to excel. And we saw that yesterday in the uh, small bore final. Verena, we remarked during that small bore final that we felt that it was nearly unprecedented. Well, in the last 24 hours since that small bore final, I've spoken to a lot of people who are rifle enthusiasts, some of the coaches here for, who, who are leading these uh, eight qualifying teams, and they even shared that same sentiment. They're like, yeah, I can't remember a national championship final that went down like that, that had so much drama and such an extreme comeback from eighth to first like Tucker pulled off. Absolutely. And, I, I mean, even I was saying yesterday, well, I mean, things could happen, but it's very unlikely. And then truly it just it just happened like that. And um, it was exceptional shooting uh, from her part and then some mess-ups from Grunzo that she couldn't recover from. And there you have it. Like the whole final has just changed perfect score in her first series. Tucker, the native of Sarasota, Florida, getting ready to fire the first shot of her second series. Remember, 60 total shots, all from the standing position, have a period of 75 shots, 75 minutes to complete all 60 shots. So Tucker off to a great start in her first series. Meanwhile, two positions to her right, TCU's Nicole Hogan has fired 14 tens. She's working at a rapid pace and is into her second 10-shot series. Hogan for TCU there on the right, Allen on the left. Remember that TCU posted some absolutely exceptional individual numbers in our first air rifle relay. Katie Zahn, a 598. Stephanie Grunso, a 596. And Gene Haverhill, a 593 to put the Horn Frogs in position to potentially win this team national title at the end of this second air rifle relay. Yes, and Hogan starting out perfectly so far. 15 tens out of 15 shots um, for her season and career high is 598 that she actually posted at the conference championships. So we will see if she can maybe improve that a little bit. Remember that West Virginia, in order to win the team championship, would need to make up at least two points on TCU during this second air rifle relay. Shooters for Ole Miss are Katie Tedeschi and Emma Pereira. Tedeschi, a junior from Colorado Springs. Pereira, a sophomore from Chesapeake, Virginia. Last year, Pereira was a finalist in small bore as a true freshman. And Pereira right now is one shot away from completing a perfect 10-shot series to begin her relay. Yeah, she actually started out really well. Um, if we look at her season average of 592, I mean, starting out perfectly is really on a very, very good path to, to um, 
maybe her career high of 597. Mm -hmm. And notice, too, top right corner of that score graphic in the bottom right corner of your screen, the two there for Pereira because Tucker has moved into first and Hogan has dropped a few places. TCU's Hogan was perfect through 15 shots. Her 16th shot was a 9.8. A reminder, again, if you're just joining us and missed our earlier air rifle session, we use integer scoring for the air rifle relays. We'll move to decimal scoring for the championship round. Integer scoring means whether it's a 9.8, a 9.1, doesn't matter. It's still a 9. Same goes for a 10. 10.1, 10.5, 10.7, doesn't matter. Still a 10. Yeah, again, like this is where sometimes, um, you know, shooters will get frustrated with both decimal and integer. <laughs> but uh, where you will see them get frustrated with uh, this this um, scoring, which is integer, um, if you have a 9.9 .9 instead of a 10.0, that could just cost you a lot. And uh, similarly, if you shoot decimal and you just shoot one 10.0, 10.1 after the other, they get frustrated because nowadays you really need to shoot up a lot better to um, to be able to be in the running. Um, but yeah, 9.9s are very frustrating here. Pereira has completed that first series. All 10s across the board. A great start for Ole Miss which finds itself in sixth place through our first three relays, two small bore and one air rifle. We're going to step aside for a quick break. Thanks so much for being with us. Live coverage of the NCAA Rifle Championships continues from Morgantown, West Virginia after this. Stay with us. NCAA Rifle Championships continuing live from the Coliseum in Morgantown, West Virginia. Nick Farrell here alongside former All-American shooter Verena Zeisberger. And we've had some movement over the last couple of minutes while we were away. Navy's Clarissa Leyland has moved into second place with a 189 through her first 19 shots. We actually also had some movement with uh, Tucker and D'Souza. Um, speaking of frustrating 9.9s earlier, uh, Tucker shot 9.9, and now mm. she's in, in fourth place, actually. So that shows you how, how fast things can go. Leyland and Isabella Baldwin, the shooters for Navy. Midshipmen, the number seven seed in this tournament. They were number 12 just a few weeks ago somehow able to scrap their way into qualification in the top eight as a team by putting together some really terrific performances late in their season. And these two shooters are really doing a fine job. I mean, Leyland having only dropped one and uh, continued very well. Um, after her 11th shot, she just kept shooting 10s. And Baldwin also seems to have recovered from her 11th shot. Baldwin is a true freshman from Nashville, Tennessee. She's Navy's leader in air rifle average. She also ranks second nationally among freshmen in aggregate average. We've seen some exceptional performances from freshmen over the last two days. We already mentioned Ellie Spencer's 600 in the earlier air rifle session for Alaska Fairbanks. And Braden Pizer of Kentucky not only qualified for the small bore final yesterday, he is going to qualify for the air rifle individual final today after posting a 599 this morning in his relay. Yeah, again, very consistent in both guns. Um, really exceptional shooting from his part in his very first year. So not just those individual finals up for grabs, but the team championship, combined team championship as well. West Virginia needs to make up two points on TCU. Meanwhile, Alaska Fairbanks on your screen is in third after three relays. Needs to have a steady performance here in this final relay to try to clinch a podium finish. Yeah, and uh, all three teams on the podium, as as of now, are within seven points. And we saw that after yesterday's small bore, and then after the first relay in Aragon today, TCU actually made up um, eight points on 
WU taking the lead. So seven points is really nothing. Air Force now, Panina D'Souza has moved into first. 12 shots, all of them 10s. Well, 12 shots, all of them 10s, and all of them Xs as well, mm -hmm. which is remarkable. Meanwhile, we mentioned Fairbanks a moment ago. The former Mountaineer Shimizu has just completed a perfect second series to bring his total to 199 through 20 shots. D'Souza, the senior for Air Force, on your left, Hurley on the right. D'Souza, native of Maryland, product of Mount Hebron High School. Last season she shot, sorry, check that, two seasons ago she shot a perfect 600. And became the first Falcon to accomplish that feat. Yeah, all over the field here, we actually have so, we have quite a bit of shooters that have the potential to post a perfect score. Now, of course, that is that is very difficult to do, and, and only few will do that, if ever, in their career. Um, but they all have the potential to put themselves in, in the final. To the far end of our competition floor, Emma Poilman of Georgia Southern, an individual qualifier, has begun her fourth series, just two nines through her first 30 shots. Yeah, she has, um, she has uh, 28 shots left in her, in her match with, with 50, sh 50 minutes to go, excuse me. So she has, she has quite a good rhythm there. And she's doing really well so far. Um, native of Germany, uh, doing very well in her second year as a sophomore. Representing Georgia Southern and the SOCON. She was the champion in the SOCON in small bore and air rifle this season. She also boasts the top air rifle average among our six individual qualifiers. 595.286. SOCON Rifle Athlete of the Year, Emma Poilman. Another 10 for her. She keeps it up, up like that. I, I, would, I would say that with a, a 598, she would definitely be in the final. And what, what an accomplishment as an individual qualifier, uh, mm -hmm. truly. Back to TCU, the team that is currently in the lead in the hunt for the combined team trophy. Yes, and you see right there why they are the best air rifle team. They really just, they hold up under pressure. They know they are in the lead by just a hair but they seem to still be doing very well. Allen only dropping two points and on her way to her uh, second, second hundred in a row. And then we have Hogan that only dropped two points so far, which is, is really on a good track there right, as well. Um, so this, this is where you can see TCU, is, they definitely have, have their specialty in air gun, and um, it might be the discipline that will, will decide these championships. Hogan just wrapped up her third series, 298 through 30 shots. Meanwhile, for West Virginia, Tucker is in the midst of her second series. 
She's dropped two points in this series after posting a perfect 100 in her first. Matt Sanchez dropping points in each of his first three series. Yeah, here we have West Virginia on the screen. Both seem to be struggling a little bit, respectively, comparing it to their to their season average and also what we know that they're capable of. So we will see if they can recover from these struggles. Mountaineers got a great number from Gavin Barnick in the first air rifle relay of 598. It was one of the top four scores in that relay. And he was actually on the way to shooting a perfect score mm -hmm. until pretty much the last the last series where he dropped two points. But then after Bornick, Griffin Lake, the true freshman, a 590. And Molly McGinn, the senior, a 591. Both of those student athletes shot below their season averages. Here we see the scorecard for both Mountaineers. West Virginia did already claim first place in Team Small Bore. Right now, TCU is building on its lead in Team Air Rifle, which would put the Frogs in position to win the combined team trophy. TCU seeking its first team title since 2019. Guess where that championship was hosted? Right here at the Coliseum. And we actually had a um, a record spectator-wise for NCAA Rifle Championships in 2019 for for um, for those championships. So that was very exciting for us. Yeah, great crowd here again today too to take in some history earlier today with Spencer's perfect 600. The crowd has only grown since. And come on, look at that. Yeah, true, true, <laughs> true fans, and I, I think that's what I love about West Virginia. They're just so, they're so proud of their state, of their rifle program. I've never felt, I truly have never felt as appreciated as an athlete as when I was in, in West Virginia. A lot for Mountaineer fans to be proud of. Of course, a record 19 team national championships, and now 27 individual titles in small bore after Mary Tucker placed first yesterday. Mountaineers have won 41 individual titles in their history as a rifle program. Here's Akihito Shimizu. His last shot was a 9.9. .9. Again, just missing off uh, out on the 10 by just a fraction of a millimeter. He's got two shots to go here in his third series after a perfect 100 in his second series. Yeah, if he can refocus after this nine and keep it going, he he will be still still in a good spot. And here is his teammate getting back to the line after taking a little break. Marina Gonzalez Mato on this near side, uh, right side, excuse me. Next to her, the two shooters from Navy. Isabella Baldwin on the right, Clarissa Leyland on the left. Those two right next to each other physically and in scoring. Leyland was off to a really hot start. She had a perfect first series and dropped a point in her second series. Is struggled just a little bit here in this third series with three nines. She's got one more shot to go to get to the midpoint in her relay. Back to TCU, focusing in on the Horn Frogs, and Allen and Hogan continue their ascent. Allen is working quickly. She's already into her fifth series after posting back-to-back -back perfect series. Meanwhile, Hogan has hit five tens in a row to begin her fourth series as she's past the midpoint in the relay. Yes, they both ha have a very different rhythm. I mean, um, Allen just r a really, really quick shooter, but she she just uh, you know she's she's on a roll. She has posted two two hundred two hundreds, so two hundred, um, and is on her way to a third. So 
she's just really doing her thing and and keeping that good rhythm which is which is what you want to do as a shooter if you can if you can help it uh, the less interruption you have um the better so right now allen in second hogan in third D'Souza has the only perfect pace left in this field, but D'Souza is just beginning her third 10-shot series. Yes, she is she's really taking her time. I mean, she has 39 shots left with 43 minutes to go, so she has a little bit over a minute per shot. Um, she will probably want to speed up things a little bit, um, but she it seems to work for her taking her time. I mean... Not a, not a single point dropped. We see Zyke on here from Memphis, um, a native of Alaska. And she actually um, also is one, the one to look out for for finals with a, uh, an average of 595. Um, has been a very consistent shooter and a season high of 598. Owns at least a share or owns outright multiple Memphis team records. That career high, 598, an air rifle, which she shot in the fall, tied the Memphis program record for the best air gun score in team history. She also has the best aggregate score in team history. That was last month at NCAA qualifiers. Also shot a program record in small bore to qualify in both disciplines for the NCAA championships as an individual. And We've been watching her here as she has posted a perfect second series. Terrific work Absolutely. from Zyke, who also was awarded the Elite 90 honor, which is given to the top NCAA qualifier scholar athlete. She has a 4.0 grade point average this year. Yeah, she's just an exceptional student athlete. I mean, she is one of the only two individual qualifiers qualifying for both air gun and small bore. And at the same time, she's an amazing uh, student uh, winning the Elite 90 award. So she's just doing exceptional overall. To Zyke's left, it looks like Allison Henry, the individual qualifier from Murray State, has stepped off the line. Then at point three, the farthest left point on the competition floor is Victor Kiss of Ohio State. The Buckeyes had three individual qualifiers. Paige Hollowell shot small bore yesterday. Derek Kaiser qualified in both disciplines. Kaiser is a native of West Virginia. And then Kiss, who's a native of Budapest, Hungary, is also top 10 in the country in individual air rifle average. There is Kiss, who placed seventh at the PRC championships in air rifle has not posted an air rifle score below 594 this season. Even if he shoots 594, though, Verena, it might not be enough to get into the championship round. At that point, it could come down to tiebreakers. Yes, I find it quite hard right now to find a, a, a number that I can comfortably say and, <laughs> and hang my hat on. Um, people just have been really amazing in the first relay. So it's difficult to say what these athletes are capable of, but I think it's safe to say that 594 just might not make it. Um, I, I would say like a 596 even um, could be the cutoff point. And it will definitely come down to Exus, I would assume. Um, so again, as a reminder for Aragon, anything above and including a 10.2 is considered to be an X or a center. And that is what will break the tie if we were to have two athletes, um, let's say, place eight and nine, to decide who gets into the final. We will count who has the most X's. Air rifle and small board, much different. Of course, we had a 3 by 20 relay yesterday, three different shooting positions. 
air rifle relay all standing. It's also a little bit closer, 10 meters or roughly 33 feet, just shy of 33 feet. And the target is much smaller too. Just half a millimeter in diameter is that 10 spot on the target. But that's no matter to Stephanie Allen of TCU. She has continued to post tens, although she does have one pesky nine here in this final series. But back to back to back, perfect series in the middle of her relay. Absolutely, and she, she just recovered so well from that 10.5, 10.7. It seems to not affect her confidence whatsoever. Um, yeah, maybe just a little bit to the left, but she's, she's doing really well. Let's see if she can finish with five more. Five more tens, finishing with a 597, which should definitely get it get her into the final. And with the pace at which Allen and Hogan are shooting, they've got two of the top three scores in this relay. TCU had a two-point team lead to begin this relay in the combined scoring. Boy, if Allen and Hogan continue on their current trajectory, Unfortunately, that could put it away for TCU. Absolutely. I mean, this is their, this is their strong suit. But unfortunately, we just see Allen uh, shooting a 9.9. .9. It's, just, it's just heartbreaking to see a 9.8 and a 9.9 .9 right there. That is barely, th there's barely a difference between that and a 10 and it just cost her two points. Might need four tens here to complete this series to really feel safe in terms of qualifying for the individual final. Seems to be doing very well with, with X's. Another X, 10.5. Meanwhile, just noticing that Katie Tedeschi of Ole Miss has paused in the middle of her third series, stepped off the line, and exited the competitive surface alongside her head coach, Rachel Martin. Emma Pereira right now is in the midst of her third series. She's dropped one point in that series for Ole Miss and two points in her second series before that. Allen, two shots to go. Maximum possible score, 596. We had five scores of 596 or better in the first air rifle relay. Check that, six scores of 596 or better. She very well may need two tens here. I would say so, yes, but she she heard us. She, she shot <laughs> she, another 10 points. She knows points what she yes. needs. She knows. Could she join teammates Grunso and Zahn? Maybe three Horn Frogs bound for the individual final today at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Last shot. This is a huge shot. It could put Allen in the individual final or be the thing that keeps her just short. She probably also knows the score from the first relay, so she knows what depends on the shot. But she rejected it. Can see a little bit of nerves. TCU had a ton of success here at the Coliseum in 2019, won the team title and swept the individual titles in small bore and air rifle. And what you see right here, um, like her taking a little bit of time, taking some, some moments to refocus is something that you can do in the relay. But later on, when we see the final, that will not be an option. So let's see if that break helped her. A 9-3. So a 595 for Stephanie Allen with 48 centers. Will it be enough to get into the final? Right now, she would be in seventh place on a tiebreaker over road to get her into the final. We'll see how it all shakes out. We're going to step aside for a quick break and come back with the continuation of our second air rifle relay here live from Morgantown, West Virginia. You're watching the 2024 NCAA Rifle Championships. NCAA Rifle Championships continuing live from the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown, West Virginia. A terrific crowd to take in day two 
of our two-day national championship event. Nick Farrell here alongside Verena Zeisberger. More live action taking a look at Air Force. Panina D'Souza, 28 shots. She is perfect so far. Yeah, she will make it very, uh, very interesting for us. She's uh, more of a slower shooter. Um, so she has about 30 minutes left for a little over 30 shots, um, which means that she, she has used more than a minute per shot so far. So we will see whether she speeds it up, but she will make it interesting both score-wise and maybe also time-wise. Before we went to that short break, Stephanie Allen concluded her 60-shot air rifle series by posting a 97 out of a possible 100 with her final 10 shots. Right now that has her at a 595, which would be good for seventh place among all individuals across the two relays. She has the tiebreaker over Road of Nebraska, who shot a 595, but five fewer centers than Allen. So that moves Emma Road to eighth among all individuals possible that 595 may not be enough regardless of the tiebreaker depending on how these final relays finish out speaking of the TCU Horned Frogs Hogan has put together a strong fifth series after dropping points in her second third and fourth series she was perfect in series number five her maximum score could be a 597. Okay, we mentioned earlier that Ole Miss competitors Katie Tedeschi and Emma Pereira had paused temporarily. Tedeschi, who left the competition floor, is back up to the line. Meanwhile, Pereira, in the bottom corner of your screen there, is chatting with Ole Miss first-year head coach Rachel Martin. Tedeschi has 33 shots to go, Pereira 31, and we're now under the half-hour mark in time remaining. Yes, they will, both, uh, they will both need to speed things up here. But in the meantime, we're back to the TCU shooters, both doing very well. And talking about Hogan uh, only dropping three points there and keeping, keeping final qualifications in mind, I believe that both Hogan and also Tucker, who equally has only dropped three points so far, both have the potential to finish up with only uh, three points dropped. And we see that Azusa is almost done with her third series, still, still perfect. Tucker did just wrap up a, a perfect fourth series, much to the delight of the Mountaineer con fan contingent here at the Coliseum. Uh, I'm curious about something, Verena. Why is Stephanie Allen still up at the line there for TCU, even though she was the first competitor to complete her series? Yeah, that's a very good question. I think that's uh, one of the um, beautiful things of uh, NCAA Rifle, um, since it is a team competition. You will a lot of the time see that since uh, your teammates are shooting right next to you, uh, sometimes you will stay on your line until your teammate finishes um, because you don't want to disturb them. You don't want to distract them. And so it's a sign of loyalty. It's a sign of respect. And I think that's something that I didn't see until I came to NCAA Rifle because internationally, of course, it's not a team sport. So I think it, it is a very, it's a very beautiful sign to show your respect to, to your teammates. Well, the Horn Frogs are most definitely in it to win it as a team. Hogan has six shots to go. Her maximum possible score, make it five shots to go after a 10-2x. Five shots to go, max score 597. TCU has not posted an air rifle score below 590. It's possible that Katie Zahn's 590, sorry, she had a 598. So check that, 593 is the lowest air rifle score for TCU. Allen just wrapped up with a 595. Yes, if that is the, the score that they need to drop, a 593, that's absolutely perfect. They will, they will have great scores, a 598, 596, 595, and then hopefully for Hogan, a 597. That would be an incredible, incredible 
air rifle round. So these are five huge shots for Hogan. TCU had a two-point combined score lead over West Virginia entering this final relay. Matt Sanchez for West Virginia has dropped points in each of his first four completed series. Mary Tucker could still finish with a 595 or above. 597 is her maximum score. But if Hogan finishes here with a 597, that could clinch realistically the team title for TCU. Absolutely. Might um, put things out of reach. We will have to stay tuned. West Virginia needing to make up two points. Air rifle scores from Gavin Barnick, 598, Griffin Lake, 590, and Molly McGinn, 591. Sanchez right now sitting on a 460 through 47 shots, meaning he's dropped 10 total points. He is on pace to be West Virginia's lowest score below Lake's 590, which means WVU is not going to make up points on TCU at this juncture because Tucker's top possible score is a 597 unless Hogan were to really fall apart here in her final three shots. She just posted a 9-9. Yes. Um, I mean, anything, again, anything is, is technically possible, um, but we would see, we, we would need to see some, some big mistakes happening here from Hogan. Um, let's see if she can collect herself, and she does with another 10.3. Mm following that 9.9. .9. We had a front row seat to seeing how much composure means yesterday in the small board championship. And unfortunately, in heartbreaking fashion, it spelled doom for Stephanie Grunso, who had a gigantic lead and wound up in third. Still a podium finish, but it seemed like she had the gold medal in hand with about 10 shots to go. Nothing is done in this sport until it's done. But Hogan could put it away here with two more shots. Another 10. Another 10.9. Absolutely incredible. Exceptional shooting. Very, very stable and consistent from her. Hogan needs a 10 or a 596. Not only might she make it for the TCU championship um, as a team, but she might also, if I'm not mistaken, make it into the final. A lot riding on this one final shot for Hogan. A sophomore from Montgomery, Texas. And She's a done it with a 10. 10.0. So Hogan, a 5.96 with 49 centers. That puts her in a direct tie with her teammate, Stephanie Grunso, who also had a 596 with 49 centers in the earlier relay. That's going to drop road for sure out of our top eight from Nebraska with a 595. And Stephanie Allen of TCU, her 595 with 48 centers is just slightly better than Rhodes on the tiebreaker. But we're still looking closely at Air Force's Panina D'Souza, who is still perfect through three series. She's into her fourth series and has shot four tens to begin this second half of her relay. Yes, absolutely. I mean, amazing shooting. I, I will be curious to see how she handles time management. Um, if she keeps shooting at the pace that she has, she would run out of time. So she will definitely have to um, pick up the pace um, while also still focusing um, on, on keep, keeping it clean so far. No point dropped. Absolutely amazing. Just have to say, as a really quick aside, as I'm tallying up TCU's team air rifle score, I would really love to know how rifle competitors calculated all of this stuff before iPhones that had calculators on them. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very good point. Um, our uh, the head coach of WU is actually exceptional at this. He just you have has, to be good at math. Yes, I imagine. it it makes you it just yeah well, trains your your math. Breaking news to all of our viewers: those who go into the broadcasting industry are typically not great at.
<laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Um, rifle is a very, a very point-heavy uh, sport, uh, meaning that there's a lot more points involved than, let's say, football or basketball. So uh, a lot of math involved. We see Tucker here um, on another, another working on another hundred. Um, after kind of picking up the pace with um, another hundred before that, 99, 98, and 100. And a very, very nice group right here. She seems to have found her groove again. Let's see if she can finish with two clean series. And we've seen Tucker get better as events go on. Sometimes we've seen competitors who have their worst series at the very end. That has not really been the case for Tucker. Definitely was not during small bore. We'll see if that trend continues here. I will say uh, mostly when I saw her shoot, I would say that she either has just absolutely excellent competitions where you don't see uh, a single bit of doubt or you might see her struggle a little bit in the beginning as we saw here, as we saw in the final yesterday but she just does not get discouraged. I always feel like it just motivates her even more to do well, and she, that's, that's one of her qualities. She does not get discouraged. She does not give up. So we, while we're looking at Tucker, quickly tallying TCU's updated team score. Need to confirm this with official stats, but unofficially, TCU's final score after dropping one air rifle score and one small bore score is a 47 31. West Virginia would need a 599 from this air rifle to count, assuming that Griffin Lake's 590 is the lowest score. Matt Sanchez is into his final series, and it looks like he is going to be the lowest scorer for West Virginia as he's dropped at least one point in each of his first five series. Yes, absolutely. He's actually a few points below the lowest score um, from the first final, Griffin Lake with 590. So he has two, two less points than Griffin. Another 10.8 for Tucker here. Absolutely beautiful group right here. That's 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 just her mental game that you see right there. She she just focuses even more it seems when she makes mistakes. She she just gets better and better as you said. Top 2 remaining competitors are Tucker, the individual small board champion and two-time individual overall national champion back in 21 and 22 with Kentucky and also Panina D'Souza who's into her fourth series, still perfect. We thought it was sh stunning to see one perfect score in the first air rifle relay. Could we be on track for another? That would be absolutely sensational. Tucker with one more shot to go to try to close out her second consecutive perfect series and third perfect series in this relay. Yeah, to see two perfect scores in one championship, I mean, that would just speak to the to the level of skill that we see here at these championships. Um, I mean, that would be beautiful to see. We see Tucker um, almost almost done with her series here. Can she do another 10 to have another perfect series? And she did, does it. Also, another another round of applause for Tucker there. Well, maybe Marvelous Mary will continue to dazzle these Mountaineer fans. She might be headed to the individual final. We'll find out next when our live coverage continues. Live coverage of the NCAA Rifle Championships continues from Morgantown, West Virginia, inside the WVU Coliseum. Nick Farrell here, along with former All-American Verena Zeisberger. And while we were away, unfortunately, Air Force's Panina D'Souza 
put up a nine on the final shot of her fourth series, which brings to an end her chance for a perfect 600. But she still, oh, she's just put up another nine on that very last shot. So now her maximum score is a 598. Yes, so um, I would say that, you know, we've seen other shooters that are very, you know, mentally strong. They can uh, shoot one nine, but then bounce back from that. Um, D'Souza is in a little bit of a different position as she's a very slow shooter. And we talked about tactics yesterday. Um, slow versus fast shooters and this is why you want to have a slow pace if you ever find yourself in the position of going for a clean score and you are struggling there are things coming up or even maybe technical difficulties with a gun or whatever it might be you want to have that extra time and that might be why she lost two points because she had to hurry through her process and that's just not uh, what you want as a shooter so with now 17 shots to go as she rebounds with a 10.1 after the 9.5. She's got 17 shots left with only 14 minutes to go, so that leaves roughly 50-ish seconds per shot, which is going to have more of the feel of an individual final. Exactly, and you don't want to shoot your last few shots, as at least if you are a slower athlete. Um, you, you don't want to shoot your last few shots as if you were to shoot a final. Um, in a final, you take more risks with shot because you have to, but you don't want to do that in a final because you take one risky shot, it ends up being a nine, and there you dropped a point. But she follows up with a 10.8, so maybe, maybe she can adjust to, her, to a slower, a, slow, uh, a faster paced pace. Meanwhile, for West Virginia, looking again at Mary Tucker, the individual small board champion yesterday. Seven shots to go. Max score is a 597. Her teammate, Matt, Matt Sanchez, has concluded his air rifle relay. And Sanchez dropped points in each of his six series. He has a 588. That's West Virginia's lowest score, so it's going to be axed from the final team tally. Yes, and we just heard a round of applause uh, for there from the crowd. A lot of the times we will see that the crowd at NCAA championships honors the seniors as they take their last shot of their career. And Matthew Sanchez just concluded his career with his last air, air rifle match. Sanchez, the Gark Shooter of the Year and Senior of the Year. His tournament is done. Shot a 585 in small bore, 588 in air rifle. Meanwhile, Tucker here still going for a perfect ending. She might be finishing with 300 and end up with a 597, still making it into the final and also posting a good score for the team. Another 10.6. We've already had two competitors finish with a 595 or better. Stephanie Allen of TCU, 595. Nicole Hogan of TCU, a 596. With 49 centers, so it's Hogan and Grunso who are dead even in the individual standings. Really tied for fifth place at this point. Carta Silva, 596, is also in contention for an individual uh, from the previous relay. So a lot of our competitors are concluding. Leyland of Navy had a really sharp start, but has concluded with a 594. That won't be good enough for the individual final. And as I said earlier, we see a lot of 594s here from Leyland, Clarissa, um, Polman, Emma from Germany uh, competing for Georgia Southern has a 594. Um, all of those probably, I mean, won't make, it, uh, make the cut for the final. We have quite a bit, um, uh, quite a bit of scores in the mid-90s. In fact, top left on your screen, Victor Kiss of Ohio State, a 595 with 50 centers. So that's better than Allen, 
who had a 595 Allen of TCU with 48 centers. But how about this for Kiss? His final shot is a 97. Really might have felt good about getting into the individual final at a 596. Now, not so certain. Not so sure, and he might have even known that when he took his final shot. I mean, that's why we see a lot of people kind of finishing with a nine because they're the brains are starting to work. They're they're starting to calculate. And as a, as a as an athlete, you know what what scores uh, typically make the final, and what what scores don't. And he might have run calculations in his brain a little bit as he was wrapping up, and maybe nerves started to show and he finished with a nine unfortunately meanwhile west virginia's mary tucker back to her she's got three attempts left if she finishes with three tens from those remaining shots she'll have a 597 there's one more just ticked it onto the board 577 her total score with two air rifle shots to go a 596 might not be good enough although Tucker has hit 50 center, so if it does come down to a tiebreaker, that does favor the Mountaineer star shooter. But 597, that really should be good enough, no questions asked, to get into this individual final. Yeah, really amazing how we thought in the beginning 594, 95 <laughs> might be enough. We couldn't have been more wrong. They have proven <laughs> us wrong with their skill. Perfect 10.9 from Tucker. What a beautiful group and a final Absolutely. half of this relay. Absolutely. And another 10.5. She just, she is not phased by any of this. She just has that instinct. She does. She, she really does. And she finished with another 10 to make it into the final. Number two of this relay at the moment. Oh, and she's rejecting the shot. We can, we can see maybe not nerves, but she's definitely trying to make sure to really give it her all with this last shot. Going again after taking a breath. And she did it again. She knows something is off. She's putting her gun down. And trying again. Her last shot in a relay of her whole career. NCAA career. Absolutely beautiful. She finishes strong. The crowd is loving it. Finishing with a 597 and perfect 300 for the last 30 shots of her match. That's that what it looks like. That's what it looks like when you really have your your mind in the game. That's what she did today. When she is at her best, she is the best in the nation. She proved that yesterday in the small bore final. And she's going to have a chance to remind everybody of it again today in the individual air rifle final after posting a 597 with 52 centers. Tucker's score is good for fifth best so far individually. And it makes her the aggregate champion most likely going to have to confirm all of the numbers. But after a 596 in small bore, that 597 puts her at 1193 oh, which is yeah. an exceptional number that is that is absolutely insane for everybody who might just be tuning in or not uh, not know too much about rifle that means that after two matches with 120 shots she only dropped seven points with it wow. that's just exceptional i i cannot find any words for that in the meantime we see the Souza who dropped two points and really had to speed it up. 
She now has um, five minutes left for her last two shots, which is fairly comfortable, but I, I have to say I'm very impressed with her only dropping two points while being under such time pressure. And there's the five minute minute mark. And I, as a, as a slow shooter, have to say, it is very difficult to find yourself in that position where you barely have any time left and then still shoot well. And another 10. Can she finish with a 598, making it into the final? With four and a half minutes left. 598 would make her a top five finisher in the two air rifle relays. And she's loading for the next shot, taking her final shot as a senior, probably her last year in her college career. And another 10. Beautiful. 598. That will put her into the final. Absolutely great recovery after those nines that she experienced towards the end. She must be very happy with that score. She actually shot well above her season average of 594. This is actually tying her season high of 598. And uh, I have to say that is beautiful to do. Um, at the NCAA championships, career high of 600, just tremendous potential with this athlete. Nearly all of our competitors have concluded. It looks like Emma Pereira of Ole Miss is the final athlete on the line, though her teammate Katie Tedeschi is also there standing by. Sorry, uh, Baldwin, Isabella Baldwin of Navy has one last shot to go to complete her final series. And we actually see there uh, Pereira shot a seven, which is quite rare for air gun. So there's a few things that might have happened here. Maybe it was really just a technical error, maybe pulled the trigger too soon on accident, or there might even be a technical issue. But it seems that everybody has wrapped up their matches. Looks like D'Souza after a 598 with 53 centers, one of three 598s shot in these air rifle relays. D'Souza of Air Force is into the individual final. So is Mary Tucker from West Virginia coming into the individual final from this relay. So tight. Looks like the cutoff line is going to be a 596, and there might be some athletes who just miss out on tiebreakers. That is just, I mean, speaking from my perspective, that is rough. To not make it into a final with a 596, um, that just shows the, the level of skill here. And every year the, the cutoffs just get higher. So absolutely unbelievable. So we know that Spencer, Pizer, Barnick, Zahn, D'Souza, and Tucker are into the championship it looks like Grunso and Hogan of TCU will also qualify, just edging out Sara Karasova of Alaska Fairbanks on a center's tiebreaker. Well, we've had incredible relays today, and we're bound for another sensational individual final. We invite you to join us today at 2 p.m. Eastern for our Air Rifle Individual Championship and then the trophy ceremony to follow that. For Verena Zeisberger and all the members of our crew, I'm Nick Farrell saying so long for now. Hope to see you again at 2 p.m. Eastern time for the individual Air Rifle Final. Championships conclude live.
from the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown, West Virginia. Our exciting, thrilling two-day competition has reached its end. We're about to begin the individual final in Air Rifle. We already know which team has won the overall team championship over our two-day event here in Morgantown. Nick Farrell and Verena Zeisberger with you. So glad to have you along for what's bound to be a thrilling conclusion to our two-day championship. TCU, the Horn Frogs, have already claimed the overall team championship. They win the airboard, air, air gun team title and have earned their fourth team championship and first since 2019, besting West Virginia by just three points. TCU won the team overall title in 2019 at this facility, doing it again and upsetting West Virginia here again in 2024. Here's our eight competitors for the Airgun Individual Championship. Spencer from Alaska Fairbanks, who shot a perfect 600, is our top scorer, leading our eight individual finalists. Braden Pizer of Kentucky shot a 599, two 598s from Gavin Bornick and Zahn of TCU. There will be three Horn Frogs in this final and two Mountaineers. Our chief range officer is Earl Litherland. Range officers Gary Trisdale, Lisa Kelly, and Ronald Morales. The public address announcer inside the WVU Coliseum is Mr. Bill Nevin. We'll await the command from Earl Litherland to begin our air rifle finals. There's the load command. We'll start in moments. And here we go. We're underway. Will it be Miss Mary Tucker, the individual small board champion, to complete the treble? Or will it be someone else to claim victory here in this air gun final? Tucker won the small board championship yesterday in comeback fashion. Her aggregate score, 1193, is best in the field. She's the most outstanding performer at the NCAA championships for the third time in the last four years. And actually on the screen here, we see Mary Tucker and Granzo both were in the small board final yesterday. Uh, Granzo leading the whole final until the very last position where Mary took over and took the lead and finished it strong, winning the final. Is it poetic? Is it foreshadowing? Maybe those two will go right down to the wire. Oh, Tucker has again started slowly at 9.9 .9 in her first shot. A reminder, we moved to decimal. Integer scoring was in effect for the air rifle relays. We moved to decimal, so the score you see is the score you get now. We'll have two five-shot series that must be completed in 250 seconds each. Then we move on to elimination pairs. Shots 11 and 12, then someone's eliminated. Then 13 and 14, then another elimination until we're left with two competitors to shoot two more shots to claim the gold medal. Absolutely, and for uh, time limits, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, these five shots uh, have to be fired in 250 seconds, which equates to about 50 seconds per shot. So... Uh, shooters really need to be uh, on a rhythm here. They cannot wait or take another breath to maybe think things over or check their technique. So this is really a match where it's decided who can work with what they have in the moment the best and uh, who can, you know, who, who keeps their nerves together. Hot start from West Virginia's Gavin Barnick. He shot a 598 in the relay to qualify the third best score in the relay, that 10-9 on his second attempt is the highest possible score one can attain. An amazing 10.7, 10.8. He's, he's on the way. If he shoots a 10.6, he will have an average of 10.6 in his first series, which would be absolutely outstanding, probably Bar putting him in the lead. Forgive me, Verena. Barnick, one of three individuals to shoot. A perfect 600 in air gun this season. We saw one of those today. It was absolutely incredible from Elijah Spencer. Had us on the edge of our seat as Spencer shot a perfect 600 to lead all competitors in the qualifying relay. And there's Barnick with a 10-4, an even 53.0 through his first series. Looks like Tucker and Panina D'Souza of Air Force, along with Ellie Spencer, the last competitors to fire one more attempt here. 
taking a look at Braden Pizer. He posted the second best score in the relay, 599. Pizer taking his time, just doing a, a few holds. He already finished a series. And there's the stop for this series. So let's recap our scoring. It's Barnick of West Virginia leading the way. And listen to that roar from the crowd here at the WBU Coliseum. The host Mountaineers finishing second as a team, three points off TCU. But Barnick is looking to help West Virginia sweep the individual trophies here in the individual finals. Katie Zahn in third for TCU and Elijah Spencer of Alaska Fairbanks, who shot that perfect 600 is also right there neck and neck second and third place are spencer 51.8 zahn 51.7 can't count out mary tucker yet she's at 51 which is two full points off the lead but she came back from eighth place after the first series to win the small bore final yesterday absolutely i mean uh, it's uh, again nothing is said yet there are only two points behind about two points um a little less for some um, it seems that people are struggling a little bit. I mean, you can see that everybody's a little bit nervous. Usually you would see um, 52s a lot in, in, in a good final for the first five-shot series. But um, people are following up with, with tens across the board so far. Very good shooting here. Tucker with a 10.7 trying to make up for her uh, slow start there. Mary Tucker swept the individual competitions back in 2021 when she shot for Kentucky. Small bore first place, air rifle first place. In 2022, she was the most outstanding shooter, had the highest aggregate score, but finished as the runner-up in both finals. She was also the runner-up in air rifle last year, third place in small bore. Arguably the best shooter in this field. And another individual championship potentially could cap one of the greatest individual collegiate careers in history. A 10-8 there on oh her second gosh. shot in this series. This is just, this is, she's pulling a Mary Tucker right here. It's, <laughs> it's absolutely insane. And, I mean, if you look at the leader so far, Gavin Barnick shot a 10.3, 10.1, 10.3. So she's already catching up uh, in, in only these two very strong shots. But right now it's Spencer who has the best score so far in this second five-shot series. 10-6, 10-5, 10-8. Amazing. That is just amazing. Following her 600 with a very strong final. The freshman from Boise, Idaho, shooting for Alaska Fairbanks. The team that has finished third in the overall team competition. It seems that at the moment Spencer and Tucker for this series are really head-to-head. 32.1 -head. for Tucker, 31.9 for Spencer. She's following it up with another 10.6. Meanwhile, three TCU shooters in this field, Zahn, Hogan, and Grunso. There's another roar from the crowd as Mary Tucker has posted a 10.8 for West Virginia. She has one shot left in this five-shot series. Yeah, this is truly amazing. Grunso just finished up her five-shot series with a 52-2. Zahn a 52-1. Yes, you see, you see that nobody wants to give up. I mean, these are amazing scores. Uh, it seems that all the athletes woke up a little bit after their first struggling series, and now every, it's everybody's game, really. Um, amazing shooting, and it's about tenths of points here. Another round of applause, presumably for Mary Tucker, a 50. 3-5 in this second five-shot series. That moves her into sole possession of first place with a 104-5. With a 10.7 average. That is mm. amazing. After such a struggle, struggleful start. Okay, another look at live scoring here as we've concluded the second five-shot series. It's Tucker in first, Spencer of Alaska Fairbanks in second. 
And Pizer of Kentucky, another true freshman in third. He's just one-tenth of a point off Spencer for second place and two-tenths off Tucker for first. Meanwhile, West Virginia's Gavin Bornick is right there, a tenth of a point behind Pizer for third place. This is going to be an exciting elimination round. Yes, and we can see the first four top shooters are really only three-tenths of a point apart. Between first place Tucker and sixth place Hogan of TCU, only one and two-tenths of a point separating those contestants. So now we move into our elimination pairs. After two more shots, we will cut one competitor, the lowest overall score, after 12 shots will be eliminated as the eighth place finisher. Right now it's D'Souza of Air Force who's in that position and she trails seventh place by nearly two full points. Yeah, that will be a little bit difficult to make up for. And also so that nobody is confused here, we will move into single shots as well, which means that they will have a command to stop after one shot and then another command to start for the next single shot. Looking at D'Souza now, a 10-3, that's big for her. Meanwhile, we've got some Kentucky fans behind us with a roar for Braden Pizer. So, after Pizer fires a 10-8, he moves into first place. Spencer stays in second. Tucker, who has a 9-9 on her 11th shot, is in third. Both Mountaineers tied for third at the moment, followed by a row of TCU. D'Souza closed the gap a little bit. Let's see if she can make up for the difference. D'Souza still trails TCU's Grunso by more than a point. This could potentially be her final shot of the competition. Needs a big number and some help. Devin Bornick with a 10-5. Big for the Mountaineer. D'Souza a 10-8. But it's going to be just short of Grunso. And another roar from the Kentucky faithful. Apparently the Wildcats have traveled well. Absolutely going wild in the crowd. So that'll do it for D'Souza. Terrific day for her, a 598 in air rifle. Surely she'll be disappointed as the first competitor eliminated from this air rifle final. She finishes in eighth. Our top three remaining Pizer from Kentucky. Tucker from West Virginia and Bornick, who has fallen one tenth of a point behind his Mountaineer teammate in third. Two more shots, single shot style, before we make another elimination. This final is led by a freshman. Isn't that unbelievable? Mm. We've seen incredible stuff from freshmen at this competition. Spencer with that perfect 600 this morning. And also, he, he, he was part of the small bore final yesterday as well, so just really amazing shooting overall for Pizer. We see on the screen right now with a 10.5. That will keep him probably in the lead, yes. Tucker with a 10-4, it actually extends the lead by a tenth of a point there for Pizer over Tucker. And Bornick also shot a 10-4. Pizer placed sixth in the small war final yesterday. He leads the pack in the individual air rifle final today. The both Mountaineers seem to be moving together up the scoreboard. Both Barnick and Zahn are really just so close behind Mary. 
uh, Mary Tucker. So the the biggest jump will be to go from two place two, three, and four to take the lead in the final. They're about a point behind P Pizer. We see Mary Tucker and Grunzo on the screen here. Those two went to the top three in the individual small bore final yesterday. Grunzo finished third. Her teammate Katie Zahn second. And Tucker first. And Grunzo fighting to not be eliminated here against her teammate. Hogan McCall. Grunso trailing Hogan by more than a point here. This is the 14th shot. It's an elimination shot. <laughs> Barnick has popped a 10-6. Grunso a 10.0. Yeah, that will not be enough for Grunzo. Pizer a 10-4 and Tucker a 10-2. So the true freshman Wildcat will stay in the lead. And that'll do it for Grunzo. Wanted to see her do well in this air rifle final after yesterday's small bore competition. Heartbreaking end for her yesterday. She'll finish in seventh place. Yes. I mean, her, her sling position, so prone and kneeling, are just so strong, which is what we saw in the final yesterday. She just seems to be struggling a little bit with standing, if you can say that at all, because she's <laughs> she shot exceptionally. So, Okay, Pizer in first. Spencer has jumped into third. Tucker has fallen to fourth, replaced in the top three by her teammate Gavin Bornick. Zahn and Hogan of TCU in fifth and sixth, respectively. But things are extremely tight now. Absolutely. One and a half total points separating Pizer in first place from Hogan in sixth. Two more shots before another elimination. It's really about taking advantage of those two shots to really try to close the gap. Spencer with a 10-4. Big numbers elsewhere from Barnick of West Virginia and Zahn of TCU. Pizer also a 10-4. Again, exceptional shooting. Two 10.7s and four 10.4s. All X's on the board. Another look at our live leaderboard. It's Barnick now in second place after shooting a 10-7, six-tenths of a point behind the leader, Pizer. Barnick, a junior, sandwiched in between two freshmen in Pizer and Spencer. And we're looking at an elimination shot here between Tucker and Hogan with only three-tenths apart. Huge moment here for Hogan. She's currently in sixth. Barnick just posted a 10-7, Hogan a 10-5. 10.4, that will not, that might be enough. Uh, not quite, not quite. Tucker a 10-4, so she stays alive for the moment. That spells the end for TCU's Hogan. So one last TCU uh, athlete in the race is Katie Zahn, currently place three. Zahn was the second place finisher, the runner up in yesterday's small bore final. Went to the gold medal shootout with Mary Tucker. So Pizer in first, Barnick second, Zahn of TCU third, Spencer fourth, Tucker in fifth. She's in the danger zone here. Two more shots before another elimination. The gap between the first place Pizer and fifth place Tucker is 1.4 points. Pizer has had the lead. 
since the second five-shot series. He hasn't wavered. Zahn and Tucker, they were right next to each other in the small bore championship. They've got some work to do here in Air Rifle. Yeah, it is truly so close. You couldn't, you just couldn't tell who was going to make it and who is not. It's just, it's just a very, very close final here. And Tucker a ten point six. She's not ready to leave. Wow, this leaderboard is incredible. We've got a three-way tie for third that place. That is incredible. With one more shot to go, this is an elimination shot coming up. It'll be our sixteenth competition shot of this air rifle final. The good news for Pizer is he's got a substantial lead on the third place competitors, but Barnick has been able to chip away. Look, shots 15 and 16. Absolutely, he, he has been shooting amazing and very consistent. Gaining a half a point essentially over his last three shots. Eighteenth competition shot coming. It's an elimination shot. Well, let's see who can keep it together. The crowd is warming up to this. Zahn, Tucker, Spencer, perhaps the lowest point total from this shot of that trio will be eliminated. 9.9 9 from Zahn. No, 9.8, one-tenth behind Spencer. Tucker with Tucker, a 10.9. 10.9, amazing. For as long as Mary Tucker is in the competition, you cannot count her out. Unfortunately, it's the end of the road for Ellie Spencer, the fantastic freshman from Fairbanks. A perfect 600 in air rifle. Some exceptional stuff. She's got a bright future ahead. Absolutely. I mean, uh, she, she can be very proud of what she's done here today and also yesterday. A career high, 600 in air rifle on the biggest of stages. Okay, recapping our remaining four competitors in order. Pizer on your screen is still in first, but Barnick of West Virginia is just a tenth of a point behind the Kentucky Wildcat. In third place is Mary Tucker and Katie Zahn in fourth. She's a full point behind Tucker. Two more shots before our next elimination, before we go down to a final three. Yes, it's, it's not at all impossible to catch up a whole point over two shots, but with Tucker just being, being Mary Tucker, it's difficult to make that up. A tremendous crowd at the Coliseum today, just shy of 1,000 spectators in attendance. And they're definitely getting into it. Katie's on a 10-6. Barnick, a 10-6. They're ready to fight now. 10.4 uh, from Tucker. So she's making up two tenths. And a 10-1 from Pizer, which drops him out of the lead for the first time in the elimination portion of this event. That means West Virginia's Gavin Barnick, who shot a 598 in the relay round, has moved into first place, much to the delight of the hometown crowd here in Morgantown. So Barnick first, Pizer second, Tucker third, and Zahn of TCU in the danger zone here. She could be eliminated after this shot. She's eight-tenths of a point behind Tucker and she'll be cut if she remains in fourth place after the 20th competition shot, which is forthcoming. We see both of them next to each other. And a 10.3. That might not be quite enough to stay in the final. Tucker, a 10.0. She's just barely going to hang on here. 
and she loses more ground on the top competitors, Barnick and Pizer. Pizer just shooting a 10.7, getting applause from the crowd for his exceptional shooting and getting more of a lead above Tucker. So Zahn is eliminated, meaning we now know our podium finishers. We just don't know the order quite yet. West Virginia, Kentucky, West Virginia. Barnick in first, Kaiser second, Tucker in third. She'll need to make up a full point plus in order to advance to the final two shots to shoot for first place. Yeah, Tucker being a very experienced shooter against freshman Pizer. It's difficult to say what might happen. You see Barnick on the screen here. Last season, Barnick, a transfer shot for Alaska Fairbanks, part of that NCAA team championship for the Nooks. Looking to etch his name into competition history with an individual air rifle title. A 10-5 might help. But it's a 10-6 from Pizer to answer, and they're deadlocked. In incredible. He's not giving up. A little nod and shrug, acknowledging the fact, too, from Barnick. Tucker with a 10.0. She has definitely fallen off the pace here, needs to make up more than a point with one shot left. So Bornick and Pizer appear to be in position to advance to our final elimination round. Tucker needs a gigantic number and a miracle. That is, that is well put. <laughs> that is very well put. <laughs> she has been the miracle worker at this championship. The aggregate, first overall aggregate finisher and yesterday's small bore individual champion. Yes, that is why I'm withholding any any opinions on the situation because it's Mary Tucker. <laughs> Barnick has fired his score up to 10.30.3, but he's such, passed by Pizer. Such a strong shooting from Pizer. Two 10.6s in this situation. And that is it for Mary Tucker. Amazing shooter. She's done so well. And the crowd is loving her. Mary Tucker, nothing short of masterful yesterday. She finishes in third place in air rifle. And we're on to just two competitors now. And, and it's Braden Pizer, the true freshman of Kentucky, who leads Gavin Barnick, the transfer from Alaska Fairbanks, and junior for West Virginia. Anything can happen. They're three tenths of a point apart, so. Two shots to determine our individual national champion. Could it be freshman Pizer? Ten point eight from Barnick. And Pizer at ten one. That puts West Virginia's Barnick back in front by four tenths of a point with one match shot to go. Six tenths of a point is what separates them. But as we've been reminded throughout this championship, both yesterday and today, one shot can change everything. Absolutely, and this is still, everything can be made up here. Gavin Barnick was a history maker earlier this season, just a month ago, a perfect 600 at the Gark Championships, becoming just the eighth Mountaineer in program history to accomplish the feat. He's one shot away from an individual air rifle championship. The crowd is giving it, it all. 10.5, 10 10.6, 10 he makes it. Unbelievable, a Mountaineer wins the final. By just half a point, Gavin Bornick of West Virginia edges Braden Pizer of Kentucky.
for first place in our individual air rifle championship. And while the Mountaineers didn't win the combined team trophy at home, they do sweep the individual first place prizes. Barnick will top the podium for WVU. And he's loving it. Look at that smile. Can't say enough about Pizer, the native of Texas. He's been absolutely exceptional throughout this tournament, placing sixth in small bore and second in air rifle. Shaking hands, congratulating. Absolutely. I mean, he's done well in both. Uh, and, and just to be in the second, second place uh, air gun, it's, as a freshman, unbelievable. Bornick first. Pizer second and Mary Tucker third in the individual small bore final. That means Tucker, who is the top scorer overall on aggregate, is the only individual to finish on the podium in both disciplines, small bore and air rifle. Barnick, a terrific job in the relay, was nearly lights out, just two nines throughout the 60-shot relay and clinches the individual championship in air gun. But what can you say about Mary Tucker, though, Verena? What a tremendous career. The fifth-year senior, this is it for her collegiately. I'm sure she'll do so much more on the international scene, as will many of these athletes. She's now a three-time overall individual national champion and also a two-time individual champion in small bore, once at Kentucky and once at West Virginia. Absolutely, and she's just such a passionate shooter. I mean, she, she truly loves the sport, and she will do great on the international scene, as you said. I, she has a bright future ahead of her. Well, that'll about do it for us here from Morgantown, West Virginia. So delighted to have you aboard for terrific coverage of the NCAA Rifle Championships. Make sure to stay with us, though, for coverage of the trophy presentation. TCU is our overall team championship, and Mr. Gavin Bornick of West Virginia is our individual air rifle winner. Thanks to our producer, Seamus Kreider, our director, Dylan Thompson, and all the members of our crew for two terrific days of championship coverage. For my partner, Verena Zeiss, I'm Nick Farrell saying so long for now from Morgantown. Thanks for watching the 2024 NCAA Rifle Championships and be sure to join us in a few moments for the trophy presentation.
and small bore. Again, can we have the top three finalists in small bore competition? Please come down to the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, in third place, representing TCU with a final score of 448.1, Stephanie Grunso. In second place, representing TCU with a final score of 459.8, Katie Zahn. And your 2024 National Collegiate Small Bore Individual Champion, representing West Virginia University, with a final score of 462, Mary Tucker. Let's give a round of applause for your 2024 National Collegiate Individual Champions for Small Bore. Now can we please have our team finalists for small bore. Please come down to the floor. They include the University of Kentucky, TCU, and West Virginia University. In third place with a final score of 2338 is the University of Kentucky with competitors Braden Pizer, Sophia Ciccarello, Emmy Sellers, Allison Bissler and Jaden Thompson and coach Harry Mullins. In second place, with a final score of 23-47, is TCU with competitors Stephanie Grunso, Katie Zahn, Stephanie Allen, McCole Hogan, and Jean Haverhill, and coach Karen Amones. And your 2024 National Collegiate Small Bore Team Champion with a final score of 23-53, West Virginia University. With competitors Mary Tucker, Griffin Lake, Matthew Sanchez, Gavin Barnick, and Molly McGinn, and coach John Hammond.
Let's give a round of applause for your 2024 National Collegiate Team Champions for Small Boar. At this time, can we have our top three finalists in Air Rifle please come to the floor. In third place, representing West Virginia University with a final score of 228.5, Mary Tucker. In second place, representing Kentucky with a final score of 251.2, Braden Pizer. And your 2024 National Collegiate Air Rifle Individual Champion representing West Virginia University with a final score of 251.7, Gavin Barnick. Let's give a round of applause for your 2024 National Collegiate Air Rifle Individual Champion. At this time, can we have our three finalists in the team competition for Air Rifle? Please report to the floor. That would be the University of Kentucky, the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and TCU. In third place with a final score of 2380 is the University of Kentucky with competitors Braden Pizer, Emmy Sellers, Sophia Ciccarello, Allison Bissler, and Jaden Thompson, and Coach Harry Mullen. In second place, with a final score of 2382, is Alaska Fairbanks with competitors Ellie Spencer, Sarah Karasova, Rachel Charles, Akihito Shimizu, and Marina Gonzalez Mazo, and coach Will Ante. And your 2024 National Collegiate Air Rifle Team Champion with a final score of 2385 is TCU 
with competitors Katie Zahn, Stephanie Grunzo, Nicole Hogan, Stephanie Allen, and Jean Haberhill, and Coach Karen Monez. Fans, how about a round of applause for your 2024 National Collegiate Air Rifle Team Champions. At this time, we will be presenting the most outstanding performer of the championships, representing West Virginia University, Mary Tucker. How about another round of applause for your 2024 National Collegiate Most Outstanding Performer in Rifle. At this time, we are going to present the awards for the overall team aggregate champions for small bore and air rifle. Would the following schools please come down to the floor? The University of Alaska Fairbanks, West Virginia University, and TCU. Your overall third place team with a final score of 47-19 is Alaska Fairbanks with competitors Ellie Spencer, Rachel Charles, Marina Gonzalez Mazo, Akahito Shimizu, and Sarah Karasova, and Coach Will Ante. Your overall second place team with a final score of 47-29 is West Virginia University. With competitors Mary Tucker, Griffin Lake, Matthew Sanchez, Molly McGinn and Gavin Barnick and coach John Hammond. And your overall 2024 National Collegiate Rifle Championship team with a final score of 47-32 is TCU with competitors Stephanie Grunso, Katie Zahn, Stephanie Allen, Nicole Hogan, and Jean Haberhill, and Coach Karen Monez. Let's give a round of applause for your 2024 National Collegiate Rifle Champions.
Congratulations to the individual champions and team champions from the 2024 National Collegiate Rifle Championships. We hope to see you all again next year, March 14th and 15th, at the University of Kentucky in Lexington for the 2025 National Collegiate Rifle Championships. For more information, go to NCAA.com. West Virginia University and the NCAA, thank you for attending and for your support of NCAA championships. Good afternoon and please travel home safely.